afternoon. Welcome live across all surfaces, hopefully. Uh, we are live with you for our special Saturday Easter shows. We've got two shows for you today. Obviously, we've got now running until around about five o'clock, and then we'll be back with you at 7.30 till whenever, as I put earlier, where we'll be doing quiz night. And basically, it's the relax show, if you like, having generally a bit of a laugh. We're going to be doing the quiz, all the bits and pieces are going between it, uh, as we normally do on these things. We trust you all doing very well on this Easter holiday as we're making our way through. As I said, we are live over everything, so I'm not even sure how this is going to work. Um, but um, obviously, we're live to uh, Flory Land with all the chat. And look, we were discussing earlier that there's nobody in there. Now it's absolutely full up. It's <laughs> Everyone's literally come in at the last moment because we did think there's not many people in there. Uh, so that's all good. And then obviously we've got what already, what, 120. And it's going up very rapidly as well. Live as well in YouTube. So we are live in there as well. As I say, I don't know how this works, but we are live also on uh, the Facebook. But I don't know how this is going to work. But we are live in there as well with Facebook as well. So um, as for messaging and stuff, I honestly don't know how it's going to work. So um, we will we'll work it out on the fly. You know how it works. We know how our one works and we know how YouTube works, but I'm just not sure how Facebook works. So Andy's now on his phone seeing as we're live, are we? Um, yeah. He came up and said we were live, so... Oh, right. Okay. Very good. I might have to do it on my phone or something. I don't know how we're going to answer questions on that one because I, I haven't done it before. But anyway, we trust you're all doing very well. Uh, you all had a nice day yesterday. It was lovely here uh, down in uh, southwest England with glorious sunshine and temperatures about 19 degrees. Very nice. And today, to be honest, is absolutely Baltic. It's freezing. So welcome to England. Um, so one or the other. But anyway, nice to see you all from all around the world. How are we doing, Nathan? Are we all good? I'm all right, yeah. It's, tell you what, it's nice and sunny up here. We've pinched the weather off you. Yeah, I tell you, it's sunshine. It's blue sky. It's not a cloud out there at the moment. Really it's just absolutely Baltic. So, yeah. <laughs> so yes, definitely, definitely a bit different. Anyway, all good. And uh, is Isla obviously getting there with Easter now? She knows all about it, I take it. Yeah, she's out there doing an Easter egg hunt at the moment. That's it now. So, Bless. Chocolate to Yes, yeah. that's it. Absolutely be by banging off the walls with chocolate. It'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely good. in the right place this afternoon. <laughs> yes, hide away, definitely. <laughs> and uh, Andy, all good? Yeah, fine, thanks. Yeah, like I said, it's definitely turned. I mean, we were at work the other day and discussing about wearing shorts and things and... Mm. Oh, now we're getting to ask scarves, gloves in the mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely freezing. We had the shutter open and all sorts, didn't we, the other day? But yeah, really nice. Mm. Yeah, and I've managed to oh, break it. Yeah, he's off. managed to break just... his Arado. Now it's on its, uh, where are we? Uh, it's, on its, um, it's on its undercarriage. Yes, it's floaty bits. Floaty bits, yeah, we're ready, ready now for. Um, some well decor decals and weathering and all that good stuff cool very nice yeah. indeed nice and uh matt we all right over there yeah very good yep. nice and warm in the pm pm studio you didn't have got the heater blasting out yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is sunshine here but like nathan says but it's a bit chiller but yeah no it's um but it's all right, isn't it? Bank holiday, what would we expect? We're not expecting it to be absolutely scorching hot, are we? On a bank holiday in England. Well, it has been known, isn't it? We were saying, like, last year, when we went into lockdown, do you remember? We had the warmest spring ever. It was, it was proper nice, spring. wasn't it? Yeah, that just rubbed it in, didn't it? <laughs> and then it was red hot. Absolutely. Right, okay, so the format for today is, uh, obviously we're going to be doing a little bit of questions. If you've got any questions, post up. The usual thing, like we always say, is that if we don't answer you, it's nothing personal. It's just that, you know, obviously the chats move so quick. Um, perhaps we need a super chat where people pay for questions. We ought to do that, but no, you, we never will. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> well, we say that now. We might do. Uh, but anyway, post up your question. We don't answer it. Just ask again, and we will find it one way or the other. The guy's going to be looking after chat. If you're watching us on uh, Facebook, uh, I'll try and have a look at it in a minute and work out a way that we can see what you guys are on about as well. If not, just ask us via the Flory chat. If you're a member, obviously, it's probably the best way of doing it. And then if you're not, obviously, on the uh, YouTube stream as well. Obviously, I've got that click up in front from Greg there who says it's beautiful in Edinburgh today cool very nice uh, plan of action around about sort of three o'clock and we're going to do some demos with you so I've already primed up a couple of pieces of container uh, which we're going to show you about chipping uh, the different ways of doing chipping and stuff like that because that's a question that always gets asked 
So I thought we'd do something else like that. But if you've got anything else you want to know about demoing, you can post up. Matt's going to do a little bit about primers and priming with various things. Uh, and the other guys will probably find things to do. So <laughs> it'll be great. Nathan's quiz master anyway, so he's been busy doing the quiz. Uh, yeah. and, and things so yes that's plan with that john will be with us tonight because unfortunately he is doing his postman pat bit this afternoon going around the countryside in his little van with his cat yeah. jess <laughs> swearing yeah. at the locals no <laughs> give way <laughs> picking up roadkill yeah picking up roadkill and seeing what he's gonna have for his dinner uh, so, so yes anyway uh the other big thing obviously we've got a couple of things going on at the moment let me just bring your attention over to the uh pm store uh this is the specials board which is obviously up at the moment which we think we've got various discounts these are separate from uh there's a 10 percent discount which will be added automatically for any kit uh that we've actually got on the site at the moment with any manufacturer and everything else these ones are the specials which have got a little bit extra of discount as well because we were saying we've got the challengers there uh the new ryefield uh challengers got like 12 percent off of that one at the moment uh and yeah, there is these, sorry go on, Andy. these kits in this section don't come on the um 10 discount because these are already discounted anyway so yes. this is separate to the rest but these are already discounted on the mark price that's on there so yeah definitely so uh with all the other ones in the pm store if you just go along to pmmodelsuk.com you can see all the ones down in here for your normal things so if you fancy having i don't know what we got something in a uh hobby 2000 is it all sold out yet or not quite right. <laughs> but obviously we had a big restock of that this week um so it would be 10 percent off everything you see in here okay uh and pretty much all the other manufacturers down in here as well it's just flat rate there's no discount, obviously, on tools and sundries and all your bits and pieces like that. But uh, if you do go over to the Flory store, I've got a separate sale going on at the moment as well down in here. Unfortunately, it is just for the UK because we don't do um, international shipping from here. But basically, sale prices on all sanders. So you get a whopping big discount. Instead of it being like 44 quid for the full set of sander packs uh, and all the rest of it, it's down to 30. Uh, obviously, with the starter sets are on offer and everything else is down here on offer as well we don't have a discount currently going on the washes at the moment because to be honest we are very low on stock but we do have a discount as well instead of being 35 quid for the pigment set that's down to just 28 pounds okay but it's saying it's limited on this lot because to be honest i'm limited on stock so we haven't got many of them anyway but sanders no problem at all we've got a ton of them so uh, if you want to get a discount on sanders they are down in here as well. So you just pop along to um, the actual uh, florymodels.org slash store and you can get a discount for those as well. Links are on the description on Facebook and things like that as well. So right. just we'll make an announcement. Yes. Just why somebody's put on, yes, PM or shipping to the EU. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We've managed to sort it. It's back on because Frederick's just asked. So yes, PM is now shipping to the EU. Yes. I suggest you go through your boots. Yes. Absolutely. And keep Andy busy next week for me. Yeah. <laughs> got no nothing coming in that's important to us out next week. We're pretty quiet, aren't we, Andy? Yeah. You say so. <laughs> do you want to tell people? Do we want to make an official announcement? Yes. While everybody's on and listening, you can do it. You me? can do the announcement. Me? Yeah. You can. Okay. And so for a long time, obviously, people have. Um, spoken about us stocking the AK uh, Real Colours range. And you know us, We for a while we've stopped doing the sets of their colours. We are proud to announce we are now, will be as of next week, uh, stocking the individual bottles. So a big, I have to say, big clap for Andy, who spent a lot of time over the last couple of weeks setting up the site, because obviously they've got a huge range. We've got it all. Okay, so but also we've got the brushes coming in for it. We've got well, all the other bits and pieces go along with it. There you go, quick. So, again, I know we are crap at this because we've known this obviously for weeks, but we've yeah. been waiting for it actually to turn up. Uh, but yeah. we have got all the glues turning up as well. So, we've got the actual uh, AK Black Widow glue and obviously yeah. the magnet one, which obviously me and Matt have been using for the last couple the of weeks. The orange brushes, yeah, so all the orange brushes which we use, which is handy. It saves me having to buy them now. So and also, <laughs> and also there's a, a big restock coming in of the 502 oil. So that's the sets and the individuals. They're coming back in as well. So it is literally on a lorry on the border of Spain and France when we last checked. So we're open. Yeah, three three days ago it was on the border of Spain and France. So yeah. 
sometime next week we are hoping yes it will be with us um and then obviously we've got to unpack it all and set it all up but it is ready to go live as soon as we've got it so yeah obviously we're not doing any shows next week live so okay. if uh, you know our facebook page will put a an announcement up and yeah. probably on this, the... this is something that we've been yeah oh, crappy it's it's for a month and a half really hasn't it so like from yeah yeah it's been an ongoing we it, it, it's, yeah. it's taken a long time for because they obviously have to have the, the stands manufactured for us and what have you so it's not a just thing you order it one day and it's on its way the following day it's been a no it's a big order it's massive it's a big order so yeah. anyway it's coming in at long last so it is coming in long last so again a lot of people have we've been asking us about you know is there a possibility we can and obviously we haven't liked to say anything because it takes us a while well one obviously we've got the order to put in as i said we've had to wait for the stands to be manufactured um, and it's all being shipped over and apparently it's coming over on a lorry um which yeah. is where is it now andy the lorry is located where so last last it was in the um, transport hub between France and Spain. Right. That was three days ago. So in that Andorra, could possibly be. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be in the country now. Well, yes. Yeah. So it be, it's not been updated because of no, that call. So yeah, we've it could got be, a lorry yeah. bringing it all over to us. So as soon as that lands, it's all set up on the site on the PM store. We haven't made it live yet because obviously it was a big secret. Um, but yeah, we've known about it, and Andy's been working on it, uh, setting up the site with uh, putting all the paints on and all the various bits and pieces that go along with this. So next week, as soon as it's in and we got a grubby little mitts on it, poor old Andy and Matt will be putting a rack together and stacking it and sorting it all out and everything. But luckily, <laughs> the site will just go live with it all on, and then obviously yeah. it will be out to you guys. We'd, we did have a volunteer to come and give his hand set into all. I have volunteered to come over and I might yes. liberate a few German colours before the office. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, he's coming over because he wants to get his hand on the colours before they go. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's exciting news as well. Isn't it? And then the other thing that we are planning on, uh, which is going to be later in the year, is the probably the Gen 3 colours, isn't it? We'll, yeah. we'll get out of it. We're waiting because the converted what would be the old figure paints and the military colours have been converted already. I'm just waiting for them to convert the aircraft set. So then we're going to have a full acrylic range as well. We're going to test them first, see what, because they're, you know, airbrushing. And I have tested a couple for brush painting and they're actually really nice. But we're going to wait until literally the aircraft range has been converted and then we'll be getting them in as well. And then we're covered kind of with lacquers and acrylics and hybrids and things like that. Abby's in animals, I think. James says, um, some of us had figured out what you were going to stock. We are bad at keeping secrets. Oh, yeah, we, know we know that. We don't know when else expresses to keep their secrets, isn't it? Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Ben, ben knows all about large Spanish deliveries. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a horrible euphemism <laughs> or something. Well, we're a bit worried about actually, if it does come out of that eight, you know, like an Arctic, of how are we going to unload it? Because you can't get one in this place anymore because the <laughs> Park. so it's going to be because obviously people when we did our open days here it's changed a bit the car park since probably people last came yes yeah. and let's say it's not it's worse it's crap <laughs> it's all awful parking's a little bit of a pain in the ass to be honest right. so yes so this is probably fun for me and Andy. like i said i'll be running my car around to pick it up and drive it back i'll be going laps of the um of the yard <laughs> the car park hmm. so yeah. Like these paints are going to be pre-shaken. You'll be ready for the airbrush, won't they? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah. Yeah, exciting stuff from a PM point of view, and we're looking forward to hmm. to getting it. To be honest, so yeah. Just uh, a couple of questions in Facebook, Phil. Yes. Um, Ash has said he did, and you can't find it now. <laughs> He's asking how to subscribe. Yeah. Oh. I can't find it. I can't see his question now. Who was there a second again? Okay, so easiest way, if you um, go to uh, the site, um, if I show you on here, okay, if you go down in here, we've got one that actually says subscribe, okay, and this talks about some of the little problems down here, and it does say down in here that we're currently not taking EU members because we've still got this problem with the VAT, okay? So uh, if you then contact down in here, 
and you click on here, it'll take you to the contact me jobby. Okay, pop your name, your email address, obviously subject, just put subscribe. And then in your message, can you just confirm you're not in the EU by putting your home address where your basically your bank is. Okay, I don't need your bank details or anything else like that. But what I do need to know is just confirm you're not in the EU because obviously we can't pay EU VAT, all right, on the subscriptions. So once you do that, hit the submit button. You'll then be uh, sent to me. I'll get a message. And if I've got your name address and your postal address, your home address, I can send you then a link which will then come through and I will then put together your account for you, if you like. And then all you have to do is then click onto it. It will then take you to the actual, uh, the Flory Model site where you just choose your password. And then you then decide if you want to pay monthly or annually, as in £4 or £40 a year. And then you just click that and then you're in that's it okay but i have to manually accept you in proving that you're not in the eu you could be anywhere else in the world but unfortunately you can't be in the eu it's still something we're working on it's a very slow process um and everything else like that and like we've said obviously all flory models members um have been moved who are in the eu get a free account at the moment until we sort it out but like i have said and this has caught a few people out you have to go and log into the site if you're in the EU every 30 days, okay? Because if you don't, what happens is the interrogation system that checks everybody's subscriptions doesn't say you have an account and kicks you out. Once you're out, you can't get back in because there's no way of actually building you an account because you're inside the EU. If you're already in, it has never been a problem, but it has caught about two or three people out this month. And I've, like I've said, I can't do anything about it. All you need to do is make sure you subscribe uh, into or log into the actual uh, Flory Models site every 30 days. That's all you have to do to keep your free account. But I know three of you did lose it this month because you hadn't. Again, it's a bit of a thing, but yes, not not a lot we can do about that, I'm afraid. So, yes. And Henrik says, um, are you guys going to build anything from Sweden soon? Um, anyone planning Don't on mind. a vegan? <laughs> a big, a big many tanks and stuff. <laughs> Uh, nothing that is planned at this moment. I must admit, I have not got anything in. I've just been working on this one at the moment, which is coming along quite nicely. So, yes, for our in-flight display with this little lump needs weathering yet, but that's what I've been working on at the moment. It's quite nice in the black. I bet the last thing you built from Sweden was your Draken, money. Uh, or Tunnen. Tunnen. No, yeah, we did yeah. the Tunnen, wouldn't it? Yeah. Simple, but, I've know. got a couple of Swedish aircraft, but no plans to build them at the moment. Mm. Are they are they are they by chance? Are no, they I'm built for Gripen. I said, are they, Gripen, I said are they built by Saab by any chance? <laughs> uh, yeah, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Why does anyone else make their aircraft? <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, Gordon says I thought Andy hinted at something during this week's PM show. Yes, he did. Terrible. And to be honest, John was bad. If you go back through the last couple of weeks, <laughs> between Andy and John, it's a wonder everyone didn't twig. Because if you'd notice, if you go back, John's got all of his AK paints lined up at one point. Nathan did behind him. Yeah, and it was like, honestly, yeah. you two are crap. <laughs> and somebody said something about a different paint and they were both on set. I like the AK paints. It was like, really? <laughs> He's up there. For the past it's like month. the worst kept secret oh, yeah. ever. <laughs> in the back. <laughs> well, someone asked on Wednesday's show, are we going to be stocking the AK Real Colour singles, didn't they? Mm. Yeah. And to be honest, we've had various questions, obviously, about the glues and the things. And what we don't want to do is saying yes, because, you know, obviously we've had the order in for quite a while now, but it's had to be put together. And what we don't want to do is tell people we, we've got it and it's coming and then it's weeks away. You know, to be honest, we're not AMK here. <laughs> you know, and start pushing something we haven't got. I like to know it's left the factory and it's on its way. When it's on a lorry coming over, I'm quite happy like now to say yes, because it has left them. So we know it's on the way. And then Andy's already done all the work to get the site set up for it. So that was the thing. But I didn't yeah. like to sort of say, yes, we're getting it. And it's still months away, because that's just horrible, isn't it? So basically then what we're saying is next time you see us on a live show, we're all of AK t-shirts on. Yeah, we're going to look like AK. We're going to be pimped out by AK. <laughs> <laughs> so before one of the live shows a few weeks ago, I did add a Tammy tape, put AK on the t shirt. Yes. 
<laughs> so, uh, but no, we haven't got any free stuff, unfortunately. We have paid for all of this lot, so we're not sponsored by anyone. No, the only thing is, we have, you know, this is the other thing as well. We're not just one of these companies which will just flog it. You know, if the deal comes along and flog it, it's got to be good stuff. So to be honest, that's the whole reason. Matt got in the glues, for instance, and me and Matt have been using them for the last, well, months and months now, haven't we? Months, isn't it? Yeah. So because we want to know how long it lasts. We want to know how well it works. We don't want to just be use it once, oh, it's good, it sticks, because all glues stick. I want to know how long it lasts in the bottle, and we're halfway through the bottle now, and it's still working, so that's quite good. And the Black Widow stuff's good as well, because it's a little bit pliable. There's Nathan, so, there's Nathan so, We're all we've all been trying... Mm. Yeah, Take the paint's out. Things, so. so, you know, yeah. for me, obviously using, I wanted to use the Air Series before we committed to having them and you, and stocking them because I wanted to use them. So that's why when we did the, um, I used the actual Air Series of these ones, wherever they are, for doing the Hurricane. So that was the whole point of using it was the Hurricane. So I wanted to use them properly instead of just demoing with them to use them in anger to make sure they are good. And to be honest, they are. They do work well. And we've, I've used the armor yeah. sets as well. They're very good. The guys have been using them as well for the last few months. You know, that's before we even decided we were going to buy them. So, yeah. David um, says, yeah. Well, David says, um, I was, um, there was me thinking PM were going to start stopping, stocking umbral, pay, umbral enamels. <laughs> um, yeah. David, David has asked, does PM only stock products that we like? Yes, basically. Essentially, yeah. right. To be honest, when me and Matt first sat down and we went through this at the on the decking one nice October's day, it was that thing is like, you know, we will stock and flog what we use, you know. Yeah. So we put the weight of what we do behind it. That's the whole point. We don't just stock stuff that makes money, you know, it's got to be stuff that is either the best or in. Certain products we do, we might not use ourselves, but we need to have a range of stuff in, like acrylics and various things so we try and cover everything like gen 3s we want to play with anyway but we've had a bit of a go with them they seem to work well but we're waiting for ak to catch up with developing the, along with those things so again it seems to be good paint seems to be really really nice so that's why we do it but everything you see technically on the actual pm store is everything we use so that's the whole point Somebody's, uh, so you have black as acrylics and hybrids. When are you going to stop real paint, humbo and apples? When you get them stupid tins. Yes. I like the stupid tins. No, the stupid tins are a waste of space. They need to be gone. But, excellent. Do you know, hold on. Because going back to humbo enamels or enamel paints in general, I, you know, there is a still a place and people do like them. Hmm. Uh, we can't deny that. We don't use them. For, because we've, you know, moved on in and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But it's the tinlets are rubbish. Yeah. I don't like the, I think the packaging, I think they need to update the packaging of... Like as we said, if they was to put them into bottles... Yeah. It would actually probably improve the product from a point of view of being, one, getting it out, and two, getting it back in, and various things to it. But the tinlets yeah. are just awful. It's like a 1960s design that, you know... Things should have been done. Has everyone ever, bro has everyone ever broke a humble tinlet? No. <laughs> this is it. Cockroaches, aren't they? Do you I remember broke... as a kid, you'd have a bonfire and all would be left yeah. at the end, wouldn't it? <laughs> would be tinlets in there where they popped yeah. off, but the tin was still fine. You could probably yeah. still use it. So you just have a pile of ash and a load of tinlets in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I broke a few tools trying to actually get in a tinlet. Yeah, I've done that as well. I must admit, the amount of times I've broke tools where I've put it underneath like knives and things and they've snapped the end off trying to get them open. Tweezers, so, screwdrivers, small screwdrivers. Oh, yeah. God. It's, um, yeah. Tim has asked a question. He says, uh, for those who haven't tried AK paints, what's good about them? Question mark. Colours? Question mark. Who wants to start? Okay, I'll go first. I did a right. review of them originally because, to be honest with you, um, uh, AK sent me a lovely book and a presentation and all the rest of it when they very first came out. Um, and I did a review of them, which you can still see. It's up uh, on YouTube and all the rest of it, and it's on the sites. Um, and I thought they were really good. They were great because they're compatible with pretty much everything. So they're a hybrid. They're very much like Tamiya paints and all the rest of it. The big thing is with them though, they do a great color range uh, and all of their colors are matched. And if you go through and uh, to their website and have a look, they've color chip matched to originals, but insides of things 
So where it would have weathered and faded on the outside, they've got the originals from the inside. That's a nice thing with them. The great thing is though, personally, I like using them with lacquer. So I put lacquer thinners through them and they just work beautiful. They work just as well as Tamiya do and everything else, any other lacquer paint. But the great thing is you can hand paint with them as well as obviously with airbrushing them and everything in between. The color range is very nice. It, it, it's gonna complement, I think, the attacker range and obviously with the Tamiya ranges as well. And that's the nice thing sure. to them. But you can use them technically as an acrylic with acrylic thinners as well as using them with lacquer thinners and their own thinners. So. Yeah. IPA it works well with. So yes. again. IPA. Thinned it with IPA it worked quite nicely with as well. Yeah. So they're uh, very very, very, very similar to the like you said, the Tammy range, aren't they? Hmm. Except we have a broader range of colours. And they're sort of like they're and also very similar to um Mr. Colour Hobby uh, Aqueous paints. Yeah. Which we don't seem to push as much as we really should do, really. Hmm. Um and but again, it's it's just the broad range of colours that they do, and so like yeah, and it's they're easy to use. You mm. know, start off with a fifty-fifty mix, and you sort like yeah, you you start to put it down. There's no problems, you know, putting them down. They just go down really well. Yeah. And again, oh, yeah. you know, the thing is with it, it it doesn't have that traditional clogging problem that other acrylics have had, and perhaps some of the hybrids have either. And especially if you're using it with lacquer paints, you know, you just spray and you just go and spray and i did tight camo work when i did the uh russian sam system it's got the three uh color russian camo on it and i used ak for all of that one it worked beautifully and then when i went over to do the hurricane obviously we used masks with it as well it wasn't free-handed but it sprayed beautifully and it goes off well and it weathers in well and all the other bits and pieces with it it's something not not to like about it it just works so, mm, that's, and that's it. It's a, the easiest yeah. way to describe it's hassle free. You know, yeah. it's just going to thin, it's going to spray, it will dry, you can sand it, you can weather it, and you just don't have any problems with it. And that's the whole point. It's a nice, straightforward, easy paint to use, just like using Tamiya's or Hataka and all the rest of it. And we're not binning off Hataka's or Tamiya's or anything else. We're going to keep those ranges going along because, again, it complements. So, you know, but to be honest with you, the thing I do like about the uh, AK stuff is the color ranges. You know, if you're into the German stuff, uh, you know, land uh, tanks and stuff like that, they've got all the colors and obviously all the Russian colors and everybody else's colors go through. And with the air series as well, with all aircraft, they've got all the national nation colors done. They're all color matched and checked and they all look really good colors as well. So, yeah. Paul, I was just asked, um... The Mr. Colour lacquer paints, well, would we stock in them? Probably not, because we've got like, then obviously we've got a tacker in. Yeah. Which is a lacquer, full lacquer range. And then obviously the real colours is going to cover everything that, yeah. you know, the Mr. Colour range does. We've also got the accuracy in as well. So to be honest, probably not, um, not for the for the foreseeable future. Like I said, the next one is definitely an acrylic range, but that's where we need to, um, where we need to be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it's just, it's one of those ones. We want to expand the paint ranges. Obviously, still there's a few things we want to do. And it's just to give the customer choices of all these ones. And again, we use them all. You know, I've got AK down in here. We've got Attacker. We've got the Tamiya's. I've got the gun stuff down there. It's all colors. Oh, I was using guns yesterday. Weirdly, I needed a funny color. Guns came up brown with the brown H7. Works perfectly for the X15. So it was like, you know, it's quite handy because everybody has those types of colors all the way through. Uh, for doing it so yeah I think it's just one of those ones it, it's just it could become the go-to paint because it just works all the time but it's nice to have the options to go through and again I think you know we've spoken about it me and Matt a lot about it. we want an acrylic range to go through um, we were looking at some of the manufacturers color ranges and it's like there's always little iffy problems with them and various things so we want one that covers everything and it looks like the Gen 3s are going to be the way to go with that because they just seem to have all the colors again it's all lined up it's straightforward we haven't found a downside to using it yet so it seems all right it does seem good stuff now i'm not to be honest i've not airbrushed with it yet mm. but i've brush painted and it does brush paint absolutely fantastic um and i've read the i'm not saying they've cured the clogging because it's acrylic but there is definitely less but i want to try that for myself mm. just to just to see yeah um, I've just not really had a project to kind of use it on with the colours, if that makes sense, because the colours at the minute are, 
they all went for like the the, um, the white top, Mr. Colour, which was sort of the, I suppose I won't say fantasy, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that yeah. range off. But now they've converted their old acrylics. They're all being converted to the Gen 3, so it's proper colours now. Mm -hmm. Proper bigger paints and <laughs> like armour and the aircraft. So that set you had where you painted your Hurricane mm -hmm. will now be obviously Gen 3 by, I think it's summer they're on about doing it for, you know, yeah. back in summer. Um, and yes, you can mix AK with Tamiya LP, Tamiya acrylic and attacker because yeah. it is a, it is a lacquer base sort yeah. of you know thing. Being a hybrid, as they, we call them, isn't it? Because they're alcohol sort of based with it. They go with lacquers and everything, and they all do mix together as well. It's just a nice yeah. thing. I mean, somebody Paul's asked about um, like the Gen Three price compared to Tammy. To be honest, they're completely different beasts, and I don't know yet until we stock it what the actual price of a bottle is a Gen Three. Because we don't stock it. Uh, I bought a set, to be honest, to try. Um, but I don't know what the individuals are for it. But um, the real colours, uh, yeah, you can mix them with, like, say, the Tamiya's, the Attackers. I presume the guns. It'll mix with guns. Didn't someone ask about the price of the AK no. real colours? No, he meant Gen 3. Did he? Mm. Put it back. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. So. Anyway, yeah, so that's our news. Yes, I think it'd be quite exciting. And as I say, I think it's a, you know, it's a huge investment for us to take on in the entire range like this and all the rest of it. But I think it's one of those ones which is, I'm glad we've got it. I think it's just, it's a good one to have right the way through. Yeah. And also because of, let's face it, with the pandemic that's happened this last year, and we've all heard about shortages of paints around the world and everything, because we're bringing them in from a European company, hopefully we won't have the supply chain issues perhaps we've had with getting stuff out of Japan with Tamiya's and things like that as well. So, you know, you know, say I know there's never say never in this game these days, we've learned that over the last year, but we're hoping that, you know, by putting in orders, we'll be able to get them quicker for restocks and things like that as well. So we should get better stocks, higher levels for us to keep and all the rest of it. Whereas sometimes it has happened and we've had it with troubles with Tamiya where a paint has gone and we just can't get it. You know, that's uh, the point. Just just before he goes, uh, Paul put up about, you remember you got the Italeri acrylic paint? Yeah. Right, is a story of why... We don't stop them mm -hmm. and we can't stop them because we can't get them because Hobbyco is the official importer for Italia. And the problem is they also obviously import Tamiya yes. and the Clash. Uh, we've been told they will not import Italia paints because they import Tamiya paints. And that's why. Did you not spray a hurricane in them, Phil? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Well, the thing is with these is that, it, so. yeah, I used them. I sprayed uh, the Airfix 48 scale Hurricane with them. Um, and that's the only time, to be honest, I've ever used them. They are a true acrylic. And they, they you know, to be honest, it, it's quite a, I'm just trying to see what size bottle these are. It's quite a lot, 20 mil bottles. Um, but the thing is, the paint isn't what I would call airbrush friendly because it's quite thick. You need to play with it a lot to get it to thin down. And their own thinners, which I have got here somewhere on one of these uh, bottles of it back there, uh, it does work with it, but it doesn't seem to work as well as, you know, other people's thinners do with their own products. So it does take a lot of thinning, mixing properly before you spray it. But I found I was getting clogging issues and stuff. But that may be, again, once you've moved to lacquers, and because you don't get any of that, it, it seems to be like something happens a hell of a lot with it. But again, you know, we've, we've had this with other importers, though, haven't we? They don't import other things because it clashes with their own ranges. Um, yeah. They're not the only one. Obviously, Hobbyco, who don't import this because it clashes with Tamiya. We've had other yeah. importers who don't import things because it clashes with the range you already do. It doesn't make yeah. them a bad product. But these, I think, you know, as you say, these... These aren't like Gen 3s, let's put it that way. These are quite, I don't know. I don't want to say Humbrel-esque, but they're quite thick. You can tell that by the weight of a bottle of them. They're very heavy, you know? So there's a lot of paint and pigment in these, you know? Are we talking, painting. Hey, are we talking Revel acrylics? Yeah, yeah, I think we are really. Yeah. You're looking more, these are more like aqua colours uh, from on their range. So you certainly get probably a lot of bang for your buck when you thin it because you're going to have to thin it a hell of a lot to get it through an airbrush. 
But again, it's it's not like a, a straightforward paint where mix it 50-50 and spray it. With this, you need to make sure you thoroughly mix it in the bottle, which is almost impossible with these bottles because it's very thick. And like these, to be honest, have been stood a while, but you'd have to proper get in amongst these to mix these up. But because of these design, at least you can open the neck and get in here. But, you know, you can probably... Try opening it with lacquer fingers. <laughs> what, and see what happens? Yeah, see if it turns to glue. God, try to do a bit of levelling thinness. All right, let's see what mess we can make on today's show. Just while, sorry, just while Phil's uh, doing that, um, AD has said this colour lacquer is one of the paints I've used that don't get your fingerprints in when, in when handling. Like if you use the aqueous ones, they are a bit renowned for leaving that eggshell effect. But if you thin them with... Um, which, which at fair, it's odd saying that because it's a bit hard to get older at the moment. But if you thin the aqueous with rapid thinners, they do seem to get rid of that eggshell effect. So the do sort of like, you know, go so you don't get that um, fingerprint effect. Hey, Ben's just thought we don't stock anything that affects a Vallejo range. Yeah, Ben, but you ain't going in the Vallejo range in. <laughs> 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 Where's my metal? You're ordered. Yeah. yeah, and also um, Stefan says, excuse me, ignorance, uh, what is, basically he's asking, what is Gen 3 acrylics? Right. Um, yeah, go on. Go it's, for this. That. it's this, basically. It's a new formulated acrylic paint. Now, I was just going to have to pause question, because he said, I want to see the layers do, but I'm a lack of thinners. You don't want to try to to glue. I'll tell you what, even my little badger airbrush there is having trouble with this. Trying yeah. to mix it. I don't think it was going to do it to start with. Yeah, Gen 3 acrylics are just basically their third generation of the acrylics that they've done. They've yeah. Lots have been refining it over, over the years and bought a new, well, bringing out, bought out and bringing out. So it's like this, this new range. This stuff. With its nice top where you can drop a thing of paint so we'll know what colour it is, apparently. Matt's match tried it, he said it's fantastic, so we'll be blaming him. I tried it a little bit for brush painting, I don't know quite for airbrushing yet, but we'll give it a blast and we'll see. Hmm. But yeah. Just press the button, Phil, when you take it out of your uh, bottle, it'll get really paid off it. Yeah. <laughs> I've just managed to paint yourself. Right, hold on. <laughs> ah, well, Paul, hang around and see you later. Because right. it's just about the AK primer. Oh, right, is, yes. Watch this space. Matt's going to do some... Which is this one. Well, I'm going, well look, I'm going to be using this because this is a, the polymer primer. This is AK's, obviously, Phil on uh, Thursday night show used mix, right? Um, but I'm going to be actually using this as an acrylic primer, not with lacquer. But also, I've got my little tin ready to to thin it with levelling thinner. And it should, technically, it's, I think it's pretty much the same stuff, so it should thin with self-leveling yes. we will figure this only self-leveling not just lack of thinner mm. right okay matt one thing your mic is clipping a bit could you plug in your other one my mic i'm on the bietta oh right it's clipping a bit i think it's where you're so excited <laughs> <laughs> i'll calm down then that's right I? move it closer to you <laughs> is that close enough are you it's not using that Talking to it, Matt, again, Matt. Talking to it, it's not using it, it's is using... That, is that not using that? Is it using no. the webcam? No, it's using yeah. the webcam, that's why you're clipping. Oh, yeah. this is actually just fiddling. <laughs> no. Right, whilst these two argue about that, over here... <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is it. So this has got, uh, as you can see, it's not doing anything to this at the moment. And I can guarantee as soon as I put a brush in, this is going to go to tar. So this is always a clue. If you want to know what your thinner is thinning and if it's working, just put in the thinner in a dish first and then pour in a paint on top and see what it does. And as you can see, this is not moving. It's not doing anything. So when I come in here, as you can see now, this is actually turning to glue. So this true is means it's a true acrylic because look, it's actually turned to tar. But if I keep mixing this, as you'll find with all th a lack of thinners, it will thin it. It just means you have to literally go in past its breaking state. So what we we'll do is we're going to keep adding thinners. I don't recommend doing this because it's not a good thing because as your thinner evaporates, it's going to go back to being a gum. But this sort of just proves the fact that you can thin anything with a lack of thinners. 
you just need a hell of a lot of it. But you can see the brush has gone flat where it's stuck with it. But it, in theory, you could technically spray this if you were worried. Not worried about your airbrush, I should say. Um, but yeah, technically this won't. But it's only because it's got a hell of a lot of thinners in this. I've over thinned it to make it do it. Okay, so yeah, that's definitely what not to do. Just to show you whilst we're here, just out of fair testness in this, this is obviously another go. This is just lack of thinners in here. If you take a paint that can be thinned, so that's just for argument, we'll use a bit of AK, because we use it for everything now. Uh, where are we? Another brush full. So if we can open this, which we can just about do, Okay, so if I pour in a very small amount, just to see, as you can see, that just gloops in. And as you can see, it's starting to break now, not just by moving it left and right, you can see it's going in. So that gives you a clue, this will be fine with thinners now, because already it's breaking down just the surface. I haven't obviously put a brush in yet, but as you can see, so you know you'll be fine. So just going left and right, you can probably see the areas and it's starting to go, so you know you're okay. So the easiest way is, if you're never sure about what paint you can use, pop it into a little dish, okay? Preferably a clear one, but to be honest, I'm out of those at the moment, so I'm using these, and just pop it in. So you can see now this is going, so if I do mix it, all of a sudden it goes very nice. And normally, if you've got a glass one, you can put it on the side and see how it's working. But you can see this is now covering really well. You've got a nice smooth color to it. So you know this is compatible to use with that particular type of thinner. But we get loads of people and they ask, can you thin? And I often think, just give it a whirl. Just try a little bit into a dish or onto anything in a cup or whatever. And then just give it a whirl and see what happens. So that is absolutely fine with that one. So yes. Yeah, never, never try it in your color cup though. Yeah, never you. try it actually in your airbrush. If you're not sure about it, then uh, yeah. Because otherwise, I'm on the right mic now. That's better. That Perfect. Better. Better. Come in, number five. Your time is up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a, a million times it, better. It's a switch back to default from the webcam, I think. Yes. Yeah. Stupid thing. Somebody was asking, um, I don't know if it's about the primer or what, or these. These are 60 mil, the primers. And the acrylic. What are these acrylics, aren't they? What does it say? 10 mil, something? Uh, I don't know. Should say on it somewhere, shouldn't it? 17. Oh, see, if I say yeah, 17 mil, yeah, because same as the layer, wasn't it? In the uh, Gen 3. Oh, look, have you, have you seen also, if you get the pack, look, you get a little mixing oh, palette. Yeah, a little palette. You get a little palette in it. <laughs> How nice. All <laughs> oh, right, yeah, just good. Sorry, before we finish on the AK pushing our AK products, we'll, we'll end here. Um, What's coming in is all the singles, as we said. The uh, aircraft paint sets are going to be coming later on in a couple of months. So yes. we're not having the paint sets in. We've, we do stock, obviously, the armour ones at the minute, but the aircraft ones will be coming at a bit of a later date, probably in a month or so's time. So get that out of the way. Yes. Have we had any questions, anybody? Yes, I've got loads on my side. Hold on. Uh, right, okay, so where were we? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm on the wrong mouse, aren't I? Right, let's try this one. Uh, hello, chaps. Uh, watch your shows all the time. Uh, getting late here in Oz, so I'll catch up with you later. No problem. Uh, hi, Fluorites. Uh, you mentioned on the Thursday show the shortage of primer. Can you explain what the issue is? The world? <laughs> um, yeah, the world, yeah. <laughs> Component parts is my favorite word at the moment because I suffer from this problem as well with my side of the business with the washes. So as I said before, sometimes, you know, with the way the world is at the moment, you think, oh, that product's out of stock for whatever reason. It might not. It may be something like a lid for a jar they can't get hold of. It may be a bottle. It may be an ingredient that goes into it. That one item stops production. So like for me at the moment, I've got trouble getting hold of clay. That's quite a big product because that's what the product's made of. But I've got no problems with bottles, labels, pigments, uh, and the, some of the component parts that go into it. But the clay, I've got real trouble getting hold of it at the moment because, you know, the mines aren't working. So from that point of view, it's like no mines, no clay. Um, you know, so yes, it could be just something like that. But for whatever reason, there does seem to be a bit of a shortage on primers at the moment. Definitely. Just a quick question out of the... 
Facebook, uh, my own, or whatever I'm on at the moment. I'm losing track where I am, to be honest with you. Uh, Martin says, are you guys going to be doing the AK weathering pencils? We already do. We already we, do, yeah. We, yeah. Do, you to, do you want to have a look on the site, Phil, just to yeah. show him? So over on site, which is Ha, you can see down here, we've got some of the stuff that's up here at the moment from the AK ranges we do, uh, but we have the pencils. Where's the pencils when we're looking? Um, go um, down. Oh, there they are. Yeah. So AK weathering pencils, if you go in there, there they all are. We have them all. So we've got them as individuals and you've got the sets as well. Yep. And we have our full stock of those at the moment, which is very good. Yep. So, as you say, you've got the individuals, or as you say, you can, if you're kicking off, I suggest getting a set. Works out a bit cheaper in doing that way. Uh, and go through this. Something to play with. Yeah. The only one we don't do is, but we just treated myself to the week. Is that? No. Where'd you go that from? Where'd you think? Yeah. But do you know when you order again, something off a certain site and you think, Am I really going to get them to bring me that free on a Sunday? It <laughs> cost about 50 pence. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt guilty. I thought, what else can I get? And I was all looking at that. Uh, Mark says he's managed to get hold of Hasegawa 48 scale Sea King uh, for 15 quid. So now we can afford the flight path conversion set. Oh, is that make it into the H3 or whatever it is? Because that's a massive. So I used to have that, and I must admit, I sold it. I bottled it doing it, but it comes with the full flight path photo etch set. So huge. Uh, uh, hold on, I've got one. David, David's got a question. Do AK weathering pencils maintain a sharp point for very long? Quite soft. Not really, because they paint. <laughs> yeah, they're fairly soft, aren't they? It's a uh, yeah. watercolour pencil, isn't it? So it's it's a fairly pencil, so yeah, it's not like a, a HB, you know. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's the idea. Is because they are soft. You need a if you, you best use it on a matte surface so that they go on well. You can use them more different for chipping or for weathering and streaking, and then you can thin brush them in with water to get streaking effects and what have you. Um, but because they are soft, you need them to be soft to be able to adhere to the paint. Don't you? Otherwise, they just won't do anything. No. Yeah. Uh, Gordon says, question, can lack of thinners cause O-rings uh, uh, in my Iowata HBCH to swell up? My trigger is very sluggish. <laughs> it shouldn't, that? in theory, because obviously if they're Teflon, um, you know, or Nomax, uh, the, the rings in there are impervious to lack of paint. If you go back in the day, like Matt's airbrush he was playing with earlier, it has got rubber O-rings, and he was using lack of thinners in it and wondering why his went sluggish is because it's got rubber O-rings. But modern, that's because it's a very old airbrush. Modern ones don't, so you should be okay with it. But that said, as we said before, you get needle grip. So what happens is if you've got your airbrush and it's been stored a while, hopefully this one may do it. No. Nope always the way uh, but normally if you pull it back it's either rock hard or it just stuck and it's very very sluggish it's because the actual the o-ring down there or the seal is just gripping the needle and it just needs a little bit of lubricant normally by the time you put some thinners into it to start with it's enough to lubricate that seal and it's fine and go through but as we said before you can if you wanted to uh, use something as simple as a little bit of wd-40 you know, just on here on the needle, don't put it on this end, just in the midsection of the needle and push that in. And what happens is as it comes up to the seal, it will stay this side of the seal, the back end of the seal, but it will lubricate the seal as well. And it will then keep it very, very nice and snappy for a snappy trigger. You can use, if you wanted to, things which are designed for it, like needle juice, super lube. What's the other one? There's another one out there called something or other. Again, a... <laughs> Vaseline. Vaseline yes. KY jelly. KY, yeah, whichever you want to use for your dried up rings. And uh, so anyway, the thing is, I've had a, a couple of conversations with people recent years over it saying about the downsides to using things like super lube and needle juice and that is that when they dry out, they cause it a sticky needle, so to speak. So it sort of defeats the object. You're better off either with nothing or a different product and things like that. So, yes. Have you ever heard of Golden Eagle decals? Yes. Have anybody used them? Are they okay? Do they carry a 
film peel do off. Don't they do a lot of Luftwaffe decals? I have no idea. Just a question we've had on. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a different one I'm thinking of. Perhaps I'm thinking of Eagle Cow thinking about it. Yeah, yeah these are Golden Eagle yeah, decals. No, actually think decals about it. I think it's Eagle Cow. They did a lot of German Luftwaffe yeah. decals, if I remember rightly. Now. Yeah, I just googled golden eagle decals. I've got big decals of golden eagles. Golden oh. eagle. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, what you'll that's get. Yeah. Golden eagle decals. What uh, what is a bacon? What is a bacon butter? A bacon like a bacon sandwich? Yes. Yeah. That's the one now. You knew that you could buy a golden eagle hood ornament for a CJ7 Jeep. What do you call a sandwich in the states? Sandwich. Oh, we need yeah. oh, Okay, it's a link. It's a link. What? Sorry, I've got a link. Oh, I'll give that link. Just while you do that, Callum just says that he's tried um, uh, real colours for the first time. Absolutely loves them. He'll be buying lots more of the sets from the PM shortly. Cool. Mm. There you go. I've never heard of it. We call it a sandwich, a BLT. That's bacon, lettuce, and tomato, isn't it? A BLT. Yeah. 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 Alex Laws has said, right, the mighty Leeds United kick off in ten minutes. Catch you, catch you, catch you all next time. Alex, do yourself a favour. Don't bother. Don't waste yeah, time. Yeah, I was going to say, save what yourself some <laughs> heartache. <laughs> There's nothing mighty about Leeds United, believe me. <laughs> um, Anyway, Alex, before he goes, you've done a really good job on your Sunderland. Yes, I saw that as you, well. You yeah, proper yeah. beat that into submission. You've done a yeah. cracking. So all that on. work he did with the getting it seamless underneath, and now he's got it on a base, so you couldn't might have bombed. Yeah, but it's good practice. Isn't it? <laughs> it's good practice. <laughs> now we're all going to buy these into <laughs> their ones. To... <laughs> Okay, yeah. Max says, I've moved to Vallejo Paints away from enamels. Uh, when, you, uh, when you guys are building, do you scrape the paint off the surfaces before gluing? Uh, it's funny, actually, when I first read that, I, I was thinking, it's probably what we all did. Start with enamels, then you go to acrylics, and you end up on lacquers. So we were saying, we'll be back to enamel soon, it'll be fine. Just yeah. doing that loop around all the yeah. paint types. Oh. Hey, we've just said, go on. Sorry, Nathan. It will go full circle. Yes. And Rolf will have their day in the sun again. <laughs> not not with them little tidlets, they won't. If they change the plumbing packaging, perhaps so. Yeah. I tell you, glass bottles are the future, like Tamiya. If they put them in them, I think they would actually be a really good... I'm not saying a really good product, but it would be a lot better for their product to sell. I think yes. it'd look a lot nicer on the shelves. Mm -hmm. With a nice label and all that lot, and it'd be a lot easier to stir it, like I said, because this umbra enamels are a thing for just separating and just being a massive blob at the bottom, aren't they? Let's mm. be honest. Yeah. Of pigment. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be a better. Mm. There you go. We can have that one for nothing, umbra. For free, yeah. We won't charge for, for that we'll one. Get that for free. <laughs> Change your packaging, and you'll probably be yeah. back in fashion. Welcome to the 20th century. I know we're in the 20, 21st, but technically. They still need moving along from the last decade. Um, I've got an answer to these Golden Eagle decals. They're from the same company that do those Eagle Edition Luftwaffe decals. Right. They should go down really well, but I'm not sure about peeling the carrier film off. Yeah, still not a fan of that. That's a thing, isn't it? It's a bit risky. Hmm. Mm. We will see. Got, but, but, to be honest I, somebody sent me because um i will come back to your question in a minute mac uh somebody obviously we spoke about this on uh, the last live show of how with their decals uh being this new one and uh, being peeling somebody sent me the official release about it from edart word for word so i read it and they say they're not designed to be removable peelable it's just that they have a, a different top coat to what they used to have. So I just think, well, you've just ruined your decals, if that's the case. Because you used to do decent decals and they used to be okay. They were always very thin and that. But their official line is they're not supposed to be peeled. No, I've, and, I've used the Adar decals. Hmm. And I use them as normal decals. 
And where they silvered a bit, I used Tamiya X20 as a setting solution, and it worked all right. Yeah. But there... Uh, do you know what? The Airfix decals... I used Airfix decals and Edward ones on the kit, and the Airfix decals were a million times better. Mm. I just feel that if this is the case, literally, Edard's taken a step back, you know. But the official, apparently, is that they are not supposed to be and they are not recommended to be removed across the top, although it could be done. So, they're mega thin. They're mm. so thin. Mm. They're, they're, they're decent decals, but they're not a step forward. No. No, I think they're taking definitely a step back with their decals. Anyway, can I just answer um, Mac here for the second part? He's saying about, do you scrape the paint off the surfaces before gluing? Um, again, this is the thing. If you're using uh, a weld action glue, like extra thins and that, it will melt it. So you don't have to. But if you're using obviously super glues or a non-weld action glue and all the rest of it, then yes, you probably do. Because otherwise it's just going to peel off from where it is. Also, we've spoken about this from another point of view is that a lot of modern kits have such tight tolerances now, thanks to CAD, that in CAD, the parts all touch and butt up. It doesn't allow for paint layers and glue. So that's why you can end up with a problem. If you've got a full interior, for instance, when you come together, you end up with a bit of a seam. Because if you've painted the um, former, shall we say, inside and the inside of the actual fuselage, that's two layers of paint there, two layers on the other side, you're probably up to a good you know, quarter of a mil now of fitness of it trying to get together. So when you come to put them together, if they don't make, melt in and give, that you're going to end up with a seam into it. And that has, we used to happen a little bit, wing that wings, because the tolerances were so tight. So it could be an idea to do it. Just quickly on um, our normal chat, uh, Paul says, speaking of 2021 modelling shows, which we weren't, but hey, <laughs> Apparently, Wonderfest is definitely back on in America, June the fifth to sixth. Or any of the t uh, or any of the team planning on attending? Hmm. Well, seeing as we're not allowed to fly in the UK at the moment, it'd be a bit tricky. Yeah. Get five grand fine. Yeah, there's a five thousand pound travel ban if you're caught leaving the country at the moment. And then you'd have to isolate for ten days, is it, when you get back? Yeah. Yeah, in a hotel. <laughs> no, that's that's just red countries, isn't it? But you have to. I think you have to isolate anyway from anywhere else. But... No. Yeah. So, yes, no, definitely. We're not going anywhere at the moment, anywhere time soon. If, hey, even if we're out of lockdown, it looks like Europe's back into one, doesn't it? Yeah, most of it. So yeah. We, I was thinking that. Who wants to go on? They're on about on Monday. They're going to talk about the travel restrictions in the UK, aren't they? And it's like, yeah. well, now Europe's gone back into lockdown. Where are you going to go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Caribbean. The Caribbean's all right. Apparently. Yes. No, oh, that's it. I'll go back to the Dominican. It's nice there. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that where we're all going is yeah it? we're all off to the dominican <laughs> republic it's fine nice <laughs> uh anyway what's the thinning ratio for ak real colors honestly treat them like tamia so i always start 50 50 and go from there probably i usually thin around about 60 percent thinners to 40 percent paint as my start mm. um but again the nice thing with ak real colors they've got a very wide area you can use it's not some paints you've got to be pretty much within a five percent rule those they're very forgiving so as long as you're in the ballpark they will spray they will go down no problems at all yep the point, uh doses but if you put the decal coat that was on the live show week uh, or two ago would you change the edard decals back to the normal style decals i think it means would would we recommend him going back i think reading between the lines for and I, think back. It, and I think it means if you use that decal solution would it make it act like a normal star decal all oh, right okay sorry i don't think mm. it would because it's still the carry film the wrong way round. way round. Mm. The, the, someone has posted a, a video up on um the forum of somebody using the edard decals and basically he's like use setting solutions to get them to go down well left them a couple of days and then used a uh, tamiya tape or masking tape tamiya tape to peel the carry film off yeah which is all right <laughs> unless you've got that model and you're near completion and then what happens then if you just catch your decal and pull the rest of it off i i think i did this 109 i put the eddard crosses down set them tried to peel them the next day and they, they came off it's too risky if you spent 
all that money on an Eddard decal sheet and you get your Tamiya tape on it, there is the chance it's going to come off and tear Ast- the deck. Yeah, Astra said he did it with his P51. It was very nice. So, the minor chip in, but it's, the, yeah, it's just... That's the problem. It just, just worries me that you, yeah, you're sort of like... You're that close to wrecking a decal by it, yeah, because that's what we use for taking decals off. When you want to rip them off, yeah. When you want to rip them off, you're sort of like you're doing it just to... Uh, it can be done, but you're gonna have to be prepared to get a second. Well, then, seat. end of the day, you shouldn't have to do it if they use cardcraft tackles, would you? Like I say, it wouldn't it be an issue, would it? Before, but it would have been an idea for Eddard to have come out and made a statement about these decals rather than not tell anybody. And it then... I still maintain, you know, and as I say, it's my personal opinion, and no one else's, is that. I think they thought that this would give the modeler the opportunity to do both, um, mm. you know, uh, of doing it. But it sort of backfired because it hasn't worked as well. So that's why they never made a statement about it. And it's one of those things I think they're hoping just going to go away without too much of a song and dance about it. But, you know, I've had a go with them. I can't get them to work exactly. I've tried other manufacturers' versions of it as well, and they've never worked exactly. And like I said before, if you're doing it for a pristine model, I wouldn't go near them full stop. If you're doing one that's going to be weathered in that, you can probably give them a whirl. Because if they do chip and break and, you know, they're not 100%, it just adds to the weathering as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, I, I think that, I think, personally, they've gone for a dual-type, it, they know it doesn't quite work, and they're in. My only thing is, though, we've had recent releases like the uh, Dornier 17 still use them. So is this that they've got a backlog of them already done and they're not going to go back a level, but or are they just going to stick with it and carry on for whatever reason? So I'll show you what an Eddard decal looks without taking the carrier film off. Mm. Yeah. Um, we put it on the over it. So, sorry, you're going to get wonky cam for a minute. So these are the airfix decals from the kit, but these on the side, these are Eddard decals hmm. without taking the carrier film off. You don't look too bad on me. Stick your hand behind it, Nathan. That's it. It's... And it's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. It's settled into the panel lines, but I did have a bit of silver in. I used the X20 enamel thinners hmm. to set them, but the carrier film is in there. You can see it if you catch it in the light like you can with any decal. But they're all right. Mm-hmm. They're just weird. They're different. They're very, very thin. And they'll, if the biggest problem I had, if you pushed them to move the decal, it'd bend. Yeah. So I did end up using the airfix decals on the on the on the wing crosses. But I preferred the airfix decals because that's what I'm used to. I think. But they can be done. They can they can work without trying to strip them off. Hmm. I just think it's way too risky. If you spent all that money on a limited edition Eddard set, put a Tamiya tape down and rip half your decal off, you're going to be a bit peeved. Yes, but, yeah. definitely. And that's what I don't like anything that's risky, like especially for weathering products and stuff. If you can bugger your hmm. build up at that stage, I just don't think it's worth the risk. And Astrios has posted a picture of his uh, P51 that, that he's done and the chip in. I presume the red on the tail is part of the decals. But the chip in has worked really well for the for the weathering in that case. But if you weren't after the, the chip in, it's... Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it kind of it looks all right on that one, doesn't it? But it's like... If you wanted a pristine, it's just risky. Mm. Yeah, that's all it is. It's like going past the speed camera at 34 miles an hour. You might get away with it, you might not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's my view on it. Yes, I think it's 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 one of those ones where you've probably got the thing where 50% of modelers don't care because it, it's just it's fine for what they want it to be, but then you get the sort of the sort of next 25 percent want it to be a certain way and perhaps they're used to it being a certain way so you sort of expect it that's probably where i fall 
Um, and then you've got another 25% who probably love it because they can peel it off and they probably spend a lot of time and, you know, they, they get a very nice finish of it. So if you can get it off and you just leave it as a painted surface, it looks fantastic. You know, yeah. who doesn't want an option? Like, to be honest, I've had it on this. Yeah, these decals are incredibly thin on this thing, but there's a lot of carrier film going around in here. So if you have that ability just to put one on, almost like a dry transfer, peel it off and it's just the painted areas, it's great because then from a weathering point of view, you'd be able to weather it as well, uh, you know, and go through all the bits and pieces on it. But yeah, I, yeah it's, I don't think they're quite yet, yet you know. It is and the holy grail of decals, it is, isn't it? It is, literally, but, you know, apparently. not to have any silvering, to have a thing where you can almost just dry rub them on and then take it off and it's left on there. It'd be lovely, but yeah, we're not quite there yet. That's the problem. Hmm. Are you going to do your demo? It's three o'clock. Right. Okay. Should I do a demo? Demo, mm -hmm. demo. Right. Okay. So we often get asked about uh, chipping um, and going through, you know, how to do chipping and various things to it. So what I thought I'd do is just show you um, three ways of actually going for it. So what I have, if I go over for an overhead shot here, we have, uh, if we do that one, or should we can probably, oh, hold on, which camera do we do? So what we'll do this one and we'll work between all three okay so what we've got down in here is a bit of an iso container on the side i was going to use the other one but uh seeing as it looks quite nice we'll, we'll start again okay so we just got some on so this is normal primer i just got some primer onto here and to be honest for full clarity we just used a bit of ak uh, microfiller primer sprayed it on just before we came on air so that's dry now ready to go and then this one down in here we put on a little bit of tamiya's i don't remember which one it was gloss silver uh gloss aluminium that was it as well so it's it's a lacquer based one on here like this okay so you've got a couple of well it's three technically or four different ways of doing chipping all right from an external point of view into this okay you can either use the old hairspray technique which i think works quite well so for this we've just got some as the smart price hairspray highly recommend using the cheapest ones you can find don't use your l net and all the rest of it because you know technically it's good stuff and it's probably a little bit stronger you just want these ones so these are technically quick lacquer sprays which will dissolve with water and won't hold very well okay but it's great for our point of view because it enables it to work very easily and straightforward again if you use a one that's perhaps a little bit more expensive it might not chip as easy because it might do the job too well so cheap is best for this type of thing so literally all we do i'm going to do sort of half on both of these so we can see it you're just going to come along with your l net like this or your well you're not your l net but your cheap one and literally just going to spray on a thin coat just down on there like that Okay, and we'll just do this one. So it smells lovely in here now. Okay, and we're just going to let them dry. It won't take long because technically it's like mini lacquer in a can. Okay, and it goes down on there. Up on these ones, there's a couple other techniques we can do as well. You can use chipping fluid. So for this one down in here, we've got some uh, medium-based uh, chipping fluid just down in here. So this is Vallejo's one. And then what you can do is I'm going to put it on with a brush, but in theory, you could airbrush it. So it is just like a little clear lacquer almost. But again, this is water-based, so it should dissolve. So if I've got a brush here that's cleanish. Okay. So we'll just grab a little bit like this and we'll do up the other end. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, we'll go for the sort of middle area. And then what you can do is you can just do areas. So if you wanted to, we'll just pick out some areas to do it. So you can just literally put it in in different bits and pieces. So perhaps on some high bits, okay. Or if you wanted to, you could do an entire section and dab it all over in between. You can put it on thick, you can put it on quite thin. Okay, so let's just do this one and then we'll just do some different areas. And as I say, just some things. And again, you're just going all over it and some areas you're doing loads, some areas you're doing very little, and everything in between. Okay, so that's those ones. Okay, another way you can do is you can use mask oils. Okay, so these work in a similar type of way. And again, this is going to be gooey, messy, horrible. And again, normally I would use a, a normal brush to it, but you can just, we'll just do this one up here. So we're just going to come along and sort of smack and 
Let's see if I can get this to drag a bit. There we go. Just over some areas. Just down on there like that. Okay. And then the other way you can do it is you can grab a little bit of pigment. Okay. So for this, to be honest, we've just got some, uh, forget that. I think it says dark sand. This is dark sand. Okay. And you can actually grab some of this. And we're just going to make this into a paste with a little bit of water. Okay, and then let's grab a smallish brush. Again, normally I would have thought of this and had a rust colour or something, but to be honest, I haven't. So we're just going to mix this in and we're just going to make up a bit of a paste. Too much water, mine won't. Add enough pigment to anything, it'll thicken up. Okay, so you just sort of make this into a paste. I need to put you on a closer camera. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay, so you make this into. There we go. And this one is great if you want a three dimensional type weathering. Okay, so you make this into a paste and then what we'll do is you can just come along and you can just place it down in areas so you can put spots of it if you wanted to and then just here we're going to do a bit of a straight and build it up a little bit. Okay, let's do a sort of a diagonal one down in here. And again, we'll just eye on the camera, Phil. Oh, sorry. Okay. And then perhaps just down in here. But you just need to build the pigment up so it's a bit lumpy, just to give it enough bite. Okay, you can mix it with acrylic and the stuff like that as well. Okay, and we'll just do the last bit on this one as well. So we stick that out of the way. Put a nasty big gash on this one. Okay. And as you can see, these are all drying on here as they go through. And say so the hairspray one, as you can see down this end, is dried straight away where the others haven't. Okay, I'll just go with it. There's that top cam's a bit tight today. Okay, <clears throat> and then as you say, you can use this pretty much like any type of weathering as well for doing thick stuff and you know for it lying around and all the rest of it. It does dry quite quick because it's just pigment and water, and obviously the pigment is absorbing all of that in through it. Okay, and then should have slightly prepared this, but I haven't. Hold on. Let me just Put some airbrush cleaner through my airbrush. Hold on, we just come over here. Let's move some of this out of the way. Just pull that with the paint. Okay, so this has just got normal cleaner through it. Nothing exciting. Just that I need to clean out that because we're going to come in with acrylic paint over the top. So what we need is a nice colour paint. So what colour are we going to do? We've got something that sort of shows. So um, if we come with a, hopefully I've got some in it, some light blue. That I think has got lacquer thinners in it, so that will work. Okay, so what we've got down here is just some Tamiya XF18. And to be honest with you, I know we talk a lot about not using uh, acrylic paints, but for chipping work, you really have to, you can use lacquers, but you've got a very tight window, as in you've got to do it immediately. Otherwise what happens is, is that it will well, rock hard. It will just seal itself in. So it won't be able to use it for a chipping type fluid. Okay, so we just give that a bit of a mix. And then what we do is we really want this to dry off. It is going, but it needs literally a couple more minutes. And this is that mask oil that we had down in here. Okay, so, but it is going, and obviously we just need the uh, pigment mix as well to sort of dry a little bit on here. It is going, 
but not quick enough for my liking. Okay, so what we'll do is whilst we're just waiting for that to dry, we will do the airbrush. So, again, just come up with this. We are going to use lacquer thinners with it because the acrylic paint will allow it to break up. Um, you know, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Let's go with rapid. Okay, so we just mix that down in lot. And this is literally the fastest job ever from a demoing point of view, because we just need this to dry on a bit. Okay, so. <clears throat> And air pressure it right down. Okay, so this is dry. We'll try it. We'll just do these two down in here for the minute. So we're just going to spray. And just dry these down so I'll just turn up the old air pressure and just dry these off a little bit virtually watching paint dry one second okay so what we can do is if I go like that there we go we can just watch these dry just for a minute I just want them to dry off a little bit more before we start coming in start pulling at it so um, we can do a couple of questions if we've got any oh look they've all buggered off and started working look as we make our way through look they've all muted themselves and buggered off I've been quietly putting Hey, I've been <laughs> testing AK third gen through an airbrush. Oh, right. Okay, go on then. Will you show that whilst I do this? Go on. How's it going? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, I'm actually impressed. Oh, God. Yeah. No, it, it will look left, to be honest. I've just done it on this, just cool. as a test bed. It, yeah. That's um, orange rust. Yeah. They call light rust, which is orange, obviously. Yeah. So, so well, I'll give it a blast. All I've done is thin it with um, Vallejo airbrush cleaner. Yeah. Airbrush, sorry, airbrush thinner. Just yeah. This stuff, just to just to see what would happen. Uh, I've had not one bit of tip dry. No, oh, there you go. That's so far, good but, stuff. Um, and I'm bearing in mind I'm whacking it through this thing that's not the most refined of my airbrushes. Because I was just going to use it for the primary demo. Well, well, we'll just see how it goes. And mm -hmm. actually, you know what? I've even managed to mottle. I don't know if you can see this. It's not brilliant, but mm. I've been yeah. mottling and doing a bit of yeah. how tight you can get. And bearing in mind, I had the um, the needle guard on. Normally, I take that off. Yeah. 
So I said, honestly, it's got potentially it on really nice. A bit, you know, normally if you're putting orange down, you put over a white yeah. sort of base coat, don't you? Mm-hmm. So this is over a black primer, and actually it's covered really well with a few coats. Very good. Uh, apart from I've got a massive run in there, but there you go, it's a bit built up there, it'll dry off. We'll see how flat it dries, you know, flooded it. Yeah. If you can see it on the cam, but yeah. So. It's definitely got potential. I'll tell you what I want mine, because I've got a metallic set here. Mm. So I wonder what the metallic spray like. Because I've got um what we got? Gold, brass, copper, silver, natural steel and gun metal. There you go, look. Mm. So I wonder how they thin and spray. Well look, let me chip this up and you can have a yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm cleaning out, I'm cleaning the airbrush anyway, so oh, just sorry. Uh, uh, nice. Yeah, carry on. Right. Okay. So these are the ones we've done, and technically these are still a little bit wet. Hoping they're going to dry. That one looks like dry. So what we can do is we can probably start down in here to see exactly what we get. So usual thing with all chipping, you're going to need water. So this is just normal tap water, and we'll just put a little bit down in here. And then also you're going to need a quite a, a stumpy little brush. And to be honest, I've got this little guy here, which I've cut down and it's quite sharp to use. Now you can use obviously smaller brushes if you've got little ones, but the thing is you want to use old ones. You think I'd have a million of them all sitting around here. Uh, but actually I haven't really. I'm just looking for some really old dead brushes. I have had a bit of a clean out of my brushes of late. Okay, so anyway, we'll we'll go with this one. So into the water and then Literally, we're going to come onto the, the area here. I think it's our pigments on it. Okay. And then what we're going to do is start to work in. And the thing is, you don't want anything to happen straight away. So it's going to take a little bit. Tell you what, should I clean the brush? <laughs> it's not, obviously, I was playing with pigments on this before. Okay, so we're just going to brush this over everything on here. Because we use lacquer thinners, it's going to bite a little bit harder, but hopefully it'll be enough to get us in amongst this to start softening the paint as it goes through. And then what we're going to do is start picking at it. Get it to give. We're on the right end. Yep. Okay, let me just clear some of this off so it's not too clean. I want we need to clean a bit of Okay. So what will start to happen is, hopefully you see the scratches starting to come through now. It, the water softens the paint and as we start to come through, we can start to wear at it. Okay, so we're just gonna run along and as to start with, you can see we're starting to get it to chip through now. Okay, and this is where, you know, you, to be honest, let me just, Start some cleaner water. Okay, this is where you know you've got this thing where chipping will do whatever chipping wants to do rather than you want to do it. Because you can come along as we're doing here and having nice little tight scratches, and then as it starts to soak in and starts to give more of it will start to come away. Use some more water up here. So you can almost use it like dry brushing. So you're just sort of taking the edge of it off. And then as you work into it, it will take more and more away. So you've just got this nice light type scratching appearing into it, which is giving you this nice sort of worn scratches and scrapes without taking off huge big chunks of it everywhere just down in there like that and then if we just 
come along and then you sort of you can just take away Again. If you use acrylic on acrylic, what can happen is that literally it will give and you get big chunks coming off. So by doing it in with a little bit of lacquer thinners in with it, it just makes it a little bit tougher. But in my honest opinion, one of the biggest problems I have when I'm doing any type of chipping and scraping is that I take too much off and you end up with something not looking particularly real. But as you can see, you get this nice chippy scratched edge to it, where obviously if you try and dry brush it, you won't get this type of effect. But you can wear the edges down and give it a nice sort of natural look rather than anything else. And obviously if you just keep going at it, you will expand that area off and you'll end up taking away more and more and more. Cut down in the middle. Hey, David's asked a, an interesting question. Does anybody know when hairspray chipping was invented? For, as far as we know, a guy uh, uh, called Phil Stuckinskis, I think his name is, hmm. was the original kind of... The original oh, brave uh, man who stole his wife's stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he, he is the one who sort of brought it to light, I think, with um, a few of his armour builds he'd used it on. Yeah. To go back, he's, he's quite a famous British modeler, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it, it, I think he was the pioneer, hmm. shall we say. But there we go. Hopefully you can see it in there. And this is what you're trying to do. It's not one of these things where you're taking off big chunks of it. You're just trying to make it very subtle into all these areas. And the paint will obviously soften over time if you leave it with the water on there and the bits in there and then more bigger bits will come all off of it so i do do this thing of trying to make it somewhat dry but it is quite a a thing and then again you can do the old you know once you've got some things in here you can start to scratch at it and pick at it and just to get things moving with it just come along down in here but you need the water to sort of soak in to start its journey if you like because the water will soften what you're going over Again, just nice and subtle on the edges and the various things down in there. Okay, so that's literally with the hairspray, just sprayed over, thin coat all over. It's not thick because we don't want to take tons away. You say if you put down a really thick coat, then you're going to take a lot off of it. But when it's nice and thin, it just takes a very, very small amount like that. Okay, then if we move up to the other areas, okay. So this up here is more of our chipping fluids. And again, we're just going to pop this on to soften. So if we do, because I can't think where it was now. So we'll just do everywhere. Here we go. So this is where obviously we're chipping fluid. It's because it's thick, it's going to take a lot more with it. So... Just feel, I've got I've got no idea when it was invented or, or about when did he invent I've got I don't know. I couldn't tell you um a while ago. It's a good yeah. it's a good old technique now, but it's fifteen, twenty year old, isn't it? Oh it's gotta be now, yeah. It's been around I a think, long time. Yeah. It's been as long as I've been modelling. Well god, it's not that old, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say late eighties. Oh no, I thought it was 2000s. It was. This is recent as that. 
I think it was. Yeah, I don't think it's as old as. I mean, it might be late nineties, but I never heard of it in earlier than that. But I'm thinking it's more. Sort of 2000. Potato funny engages in world of the best show Euro 2000. Uh, Euro military. There you go. 2006. Right. Yeah. I thought it was all, one of the oldest techniques going. No. Uh, obviously, it makes sense because it's sort of a water-based uh, film, isn't it? Mm. It's got to be before 2006. I was doing it when before Sam was born. That was 2003. This is it. So this was just that primer one. So if you see it here, you can see it was nice and thin. So you've just got very subtle type chips. Over here where we painted it in these areas, you can see you get big old chunks coming off of it. You know, so it, it is one of those ones. And you can do it. And again, you can literally run your nail over it sometimes to get quite nice effects as well when it starts to go. Because it just, it never softens down. So... You know, it's just one of those areas where you can just keep going at it and knocking areas and going through. Okay, so that's the other one. The other one over here is when you use mask oil for it, which works particularly well. Okay, so you can literally either come along and pick at it. You know, and then you can sort of rub it out the way like that. Or the great way with it, which I don't think this is dry yet, but if you use a sponge in conjunction with it. So you sort of have to locate where this stuff is, but you can sand over it and literally start to peel it to life. And by rubbing very lightly, you sort of get this joint thing going on where, you know, you can see it just in there and you can pick it off. And as I say, I usually just start it somewhat with a, just to get an edge going, because then it will tear and it rips like this and you can sort of do that type of bigger you know as if it's been hit and peeled and again if you use it with conjunction with a sponge it tends to tear it around a bit just like this so they're quite good and again you can use it with other weathering techniques all at the same time just to get things moving around get rid of that And again, the only trouble you have is remembering where you put it all. But it's usually that thing about you look at it from certain angles to try and catch it in the light because it won't be as level as everything else around it. But again, you can... Is, is that like a fork? Yeah. And then obviously you come along with everything else and it gives a, you know, that type of effect with it. So you can use it with mask oil for nice tearing effects and those types of things just down in there. The last one, which is the fun one, is this one by using pigment and sludge underneath. So this will chip wholly, but what you can actually do, it's one of these things where I say you literally just pierce it and you don't need much because obviously this will just sit in amongst all of this. So you just pierce it a little bit. The pigment activates and comes alive. And then what you do is you just put water on top and let it streak on its own. So you literally just come in and let it bleed and it will bleed like that and let it naturally pull and sit where it wants to at the bottom. And again, it's one of those where you just come in with clean water at the top, almost like this and let it naturally run down and it will streak and it flows and then it will dry back and it will give you this type of look. But if you want to, you can almost hit it to wake it up and then obviously you just come in and you can streak and to be honest matt's got it behind him it's how i did the uh the van it's, and yeah. it's natural bleeding so if you imagine this is how if you want to do rust how i like to do it you make up your sludge you pop it in and then it will naturally leach out like it would in real life so it's blistered the paint so it gives that nice three-dimensional type of blister work to your paint and then it looks like it's rusting out of it. And to be honest, normally I use like a light rust color, I think is the best one. This is like a sand in here. It's probably not the best color for it, but it gives you this type of three-dimensional living rust. So if you use that in conjunction with other things like other chipped areas down in here and things like that, you end up with it literally leaching out and coming out just like that. And again, it's not one of those things, we just grab it. 
you use it in conjunction with sort of everything else. So we did it on this one last time. This is how we did it. So again, you've got chipping, as we did it on this one before, in amongst with pigments to give you that sort of three-dimensional living look to it. So, you know, we've got sort of living down in here, just done with pigments and grime and everything down at the bottom in amongst these things, just to give it that sort of kicked in look with it, you know, right the way through. So again, it just depends on how you go. And to be honest, it's done, you know, this one's done on camera. It's like very, very shiny under here. Whereas normally like this one, it's just gray primer. But if we do it just on this one, if we show you in here with one of two of these other ones, we've got these ones down in here. Okay. So if we do these with these just very lightly, going to gouge across and then again with this one, and the gouge across a little bit up here. These are these other ones. This gives you that th sort of three dimensional look to it. And again, you come along and you hit it with the water. It suddenly releases it and streaks out. You just want clean water. Phil, just do me something. You know, on the last one, don't streak it. Yeah. Just dab it with a brush and just break the surface of the paint. I want to just have a look at something. That'll do, that'll do. Top, top. Just let it dry. I've got a, you're giving me an idea for something, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. so what you've got there, you've got a sand pigment, haven't you, obviously? Yeah, yeah, it's just dark sand. Oh, that's interesting now. <laughs> I can see an idea for a diorama coming up. <laughs> well, not necessarily, not necessarily a diorama, but it's a um, piece of armour, to be honest. So again, this one over mm. here, we'll just do a few areas around in here. A couple of little ideas we had. So we'll just wet these all down speed this up so we're not spending forever on here so soften up the paint same as we did before okay you can actually see on this one how it's opening it up now it's all sort of soaking in because it's actually absorbing into the pigment that's underneath so okay and then we can start to So the other thing as well is doing it this way and using a lacquer based paint, although not a true type of lacquer, it's that thing where it just doesn't release it that easy. It does, but it's not as, you know, comes away as easy as it perhaps would with other things, shall we say. So if you're using a Vallejo um, white top, it will literally release on the spot. No. Again, you can speed these up just a little bit, so we're just going to give it some scrapes.
That's his best brushes using, isn't it, Phil? It is. Right, there we go. <laughs> You've got, again, same thing. Nice, light ones, just down in that area. We've got some more in there. Mask oily type areas, you can see. Well, not mask oily areas, sorry. I mean the other ones. As you can see, just down in there. So it takes big areas, but you can take it so it's got like that sort of feathered, worn look on the top. Okay. Mm. And again, you can sometimes get your nail into these as well because it's got a small barrier. As long as you don't go too hard at it, but you can make, let me just try and put a line because the paint is soft on the surface, you see. So you can literally come along. You can use like the back of your, to put like a, a gash in and then get over the top, you know, to give you that type of scraping across you've got that worn look to it and again down over here there you go there's your rusty side map thanks is that an idea yeah it, it is obviously using rusty pigments under it yeah hmm. but um yeah it's uh definitely got potential to be played with yes yeah and then again, don't forget, if you go at it a little bit harder, and then you've still got your silver underneath. So yeah. you can sort of take it to levels and bring it down and washing it down so it gives you that type of look with it. There we go. Different ones, depending on how you want to do it. This one over here is dried. I am absolutely capered. So this one's dried. Yeah. There you go. And it gives it that three-dimensional looks like rust where it's dried. Yeah. yeah. Does. And it's Definitely. blistered the paint around it as well, and obviously you can go right the way through. There's that one. So again, yes. The only one I won't demo is obviously doing the salt. thingy salt technique because I'm crap salt. at it, <laughs> and it never works for me. But uh, yeah, when you're doing it in conjunction with pigments and other things, that's exactly how we did it last time with it. You know, yeah. and again using pigments for sort of, you know, weathering down the bottoms and the, the tops works very, very well. It does, especially on ISO containers and really, you know, mm. got to take a lot of hammer. Yeah. It's a really good tell if you're doing abandoned stuff or... Yeah, just, yeah, you know, stuff, with, yeah. With the whitewash is brilliant for the air spray and the chipping technique or, you know, temporary coatings and things like that. It, that's it, where it comes to its its own isn't it really i mean yeah. i did it on that little wall thing that was on this side behind me on the back i used the air spray technique when i did it on one of the shows and um it is for certain things it's just brilliant because it because it's random as well which is what you want because that's our yeah. paint tips isn't it it's not uniform right. if you, i think if you do it by hand your brain automatically puts it in order doesn't it if it's hard to yeah, I think that's also with the sponge technique as well. If you're chipping with a sponge, yes, because again, it's random, it's just um, you know, as long as you keep spinning your sponge around, so you're not using, yeah, the same so it's not the same time. triangly shape so or something else. Same, yeah, so the same same, that's shape. what I tend yeah. to do one of these, and then just as you yeah. say, just dabbing it randomly, turning it round so you don't end yeah. up with the same shape universally over it right the way through, yeah. Well, no, it's a, it's a good technique. It's it's one to practice and master as well because it is really quite, I think, a useful one to have in your um, in your arsenal of yeah painting. It's and quite stuff. therapeutic as well. Hmm. It is but actually, it is, yeah. To be honest, out of them all, I prefer using the hairspray technique purely because of that randomness. If you're yeah. using, um, I always find like chipping fluids, because you're placing them where you want them, you're still left mm -hmm. with it very much in that area. Yeah, if you're using obviously the hairspray technique, and if you put down two or three coats, it works better as well. That's just one coat right over it. You can it build it up, but on a real yeah. thick layer, it will yeah. really chip. So a lot of people say about, you know, with that, you only get one type. You don't. If you literally put it on very thick, it will literally all come away quite easily. But I yeah. say one thin coat's got quite a bit of bite in there. It will hold on to the surface a little bit more. But then yeah. you can do the sort of really sort of random type stuff with it. You know, so down in here with these ones, it's got that nice one where also just catching it in the light and things like that, rather than taking off giant chunks. So, 
you put if chip, uh, Dave, if chipping over a metal is one method better to use to not wear through the metal. Well, but again, as long as you're not important. hammering at it, you know. Uh, I mean, it's good for wing roots. Mm. If you're an aircraft guy and you think it, it's um, it's a good technique for wing roots and cowlings and things what would naturally get chipped and worn. That's where again the air spray technique or the chipping fluid technique comes into its own, isn't it? Because again, yeah. it's random. Yes. Again, that's the whole point. It's the randomness of it. Where yeah. I think as humans, if you're trying to do chipping with sponges and that, which I've done before, it's very difficult to not make it look uniform or into certain areas because you're putting it where you want it, mm. you know, and then sometimes it doesn't work out quite as well as the randomness of it just coming away on its own. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, you, your brain just sort of mm. naturally wants to, you know, put it in order kind of thing, doesn't it, rather than... Yeah. Rather than not. Oh. But yeah, you are left with what you get and all the rest think, of it. I think the trick is that I've learned is actually not to overdo it. Less is actually more. Yeah. You can go proper over the top. Because like uh, Nathan's just said, it's quite zen. It's quite a therapeutic thing to do. It's nice. Yeah. And you can just get carried away with it. Yes. So it's knowing when to stop. Yeah, definitely. So, so a lot of weather is like that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But with scrapyard so, power, if you're not careful. Well, that's where you need a buster, in it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a similar technique I've used to use, and I've did it on the Terminator. If you have a look at that build, and it's a free to watch on that section as well, is that if you use like the clay wash and then use cold water to take it away, it acts like chipping fluid. Because yeah. what happens is if you use ice cold water with the wash, it doesn't come away easy. And the way I describe it is if you think of having ketchup on your plate, if you try and rinse it off under cold water, it doesn't like coming off. Put warm water, it just flows off really quickly. And it's the yeah. same way with the wash. The clay wash will hold on. You can end up with streaking and chipping effect with the wash. So you put the wash coat on quite thick, cold water to get it off with a brush. It comes off in chunks and gives like a chipping effect to it. So it's quite good. Not once missing anything, those ISO containers available in the trumpeter section on the PM4. <laughs> yes, you can either have the 40, uh, the uh, 20 foot or the 40 foot containers are available. <laughs> and in the trumpeter section right down the bottom end. Yes. I think a couple of the members this afternoon are going to expect you to do some Egyptian sand weathering to it. Oh, what? What's that? Well, everyone's thinking these containers are off that ship. That oh, right. Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> right. While we've got a minute, shall we, shall we see how this uh, yeah. metallic spray? So what I am going to use is um, a bit of copper. Mm -hmm. Instead of silver, all that, you know, usual stuff. Let's try it with copper. So I'll tell you one thing I did notice. It comes out the um, thing. It's quite thick stuff yeah. when it comes out. It's very model... Um, Vallejo model colour. Hmm. So, a couple of drops of thinner. I don't ask me what the ratios are. I've got no idea. I'm just eyeballing it because I'm mm -hmm. in my little pot. God, this is going to be as orange as me tail. <laughs> Drop. Thing. Matt will be finishing this kit off next week. Hmm. Do you want a bet? <laughs> like it, Nathan. That's what I normally do. Oh God, what's that? It's a it's a has oh, a the whole eye. I built most of it. It's not as bad as that one eight eight I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just might have a few coats of paint on it. Random colours all over it. Yeah, it's just a random colour, right? So let's see, let's see what happens. Might be a little bit thin actually. Right, can we see this? Yeah. Are we on cam? Yeah. All right. It's a bit thin actually. I probably could have done with thickening that up a bit. I've over thinned it. That's the trouble. You know when you go from lacquers to acrylics? Yeah. Mm. It's mixy rated. You're so used to just doing thinner. That's my excuse anyway, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll go with that, Matt. It is. 
That is a bit too thin. Though, don't you? I'm going to have more of a, a copper wash, I think. <laughs> but actually, it'll test to see how uh, quickly it builds up. Yeah. Because it's actually not separate. You know, with um, some acrylics, you know, when they're too thin, they don't work at all, do they? No. No. This is actually working, I would say. So third gen is just a marketing phrase, isn't it, for the latest? Yeah. And it's nothing. Yeah. So I have a black, it's going to take a bit of covering, but mm. at least it dries quick. Mm. But if you're doing steampunk, but even though I've over thinned it, it's actually airbrushing really nice. Well, I think that's the mark of any good paint that if you can, if it's flexible in how you use it. Oh, can you see the tip? No. But it's there. clean. Oh yeah, got it clean. That's clean. That's yeah. for an acrylic. That's clean. Yeah, no, it is I totally clean. Right. Which is, you know, they do claim it in their thing. It don't tip dry, and so far, I've got to say, they're right. I've got no flow improver or anything in this either. It's just the paint and the thinner. Mhm. Mm so. Yeah. Not the best lighting in here, but you can see that, can't you? Yeah. Well, it's definitely done the job, hasn't it? So it sprays nice, it, yeah? It actually, the airbrush is really nice, yeah. Yeah, it dries fast as well. I don't know what it obviously works like with their own thinners, because I'm using Vallejo's, but... You know, if you're not a lacquer fan, then this stuff is definitely an option. Mm. So. Yeah. A nice colour. To say, it dries, what, satin or flat or...? Pretty flat, to be honest. Mm. But bearing in mind this is a paint, this isn't going to be like a metalizer. Where no, it's no, that's what I'm saying. I was just wondering about the finish with them. Yeah. Does it nice and smooth, though? It is, yeah, it is. It's... Looks very it's shiny good. from here. Yeah, that's it. That's why I was it's... asking. I didn't know if it's going to dry off. You wait until it dries off. Hmm. It does dry, you know, not a satin. There you go. It'll go in a minute. So this goes back to the point you were asking before about what you stock is. I'm going to put this to a test of putting them in the Yeah, right, there you go. That's dry. I don't know if you can get it under a light, but it's gone flat. Yeah, still looks very nice and smooth, though. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's like oh, it's a satin on, yeah. finish. It's gone on smooth, yeah. Hmm. Oh, um, I'm like, say, look, still, still no problem. Yeah, no, no build up still at all. Still on the back end of me, on my needle of the brush, and these ones are pro for it as well, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, something to uh, definitely play with and, you know, see what you can do, um, what its limitations are, if any. Hmm. Well, but, orange uh, or black, that's something. That's impressive. I mean, yeah, that's the orange when you was doing your demo. I thought we'll just have a play with the rust colour and yeah, I don't think that's covered too bad, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Just have a black. It's a nice colour as well. So, yeah. Beautiful, Tenseful. very nice. Well, as you say, we'll continue to play and evaluate and everything else like that. And if it all sails yeah. through the uh, program nicely, we'll be stocking a lot of them as well. Mm. Yeah, well, it's definitely got, like I say, potential for airbrushing, which is the main sort of, you know, thing we want, isn't it? As well as brush painting. So yeah. if it, yeah. it does both really well, then a happy days. Mm. Right. I can clean that out and you can answer some questions and uh hmm. well i thought we'd just have a quick look around the uh forum at some of the members work that they've been doing for the easter build 
Oh, yes. If I have a quick pop in here. Uh, I say I've made it big screen at the moment for the visually impaired of us. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> so uh, first up down in here, we've got uh, James and he's working on the classic Churchill. Uh, Mark 7. So very nice indeed. So he's been working down on the Laptic Liquette, which is now how old? Oh, God. Old. <laughs> it's uh, older than me. <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't think it's that old, but it's, it's yeah, All right, not... steady on. <laughs> 77. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's not quite as old as me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, classic Tamiya <laughs> all the way through. Very nice. Good job on that one. And we've also got Matchbox. That's what we want, Matchbox. So down in here, we've got uh, Sean is working on the, uh, this is the HE70F2. I call 70 second Matchbox kit. Look at yeah, those instructions. The one I should have been building, but I bought the wrong one. Yeah, you bought the wrong one. Well, proper instructions then. They are tech. Yes. Very nice. Look, no, no fit problems there. <laughs> Ooh. That, that's sure, that would be fine. So anyway, good job on that one. <laughs> and he's now thinking, God, glad he didn't do that. Uh, we've then got, there you go. This is a classic kit. I remember building this one. So uh, Peter's working on the 72nd Vigan in original colours. <laughs> Look at those instructions. See that? That's when modelling was modelling. None of this mamby fanby stuff. Photo etch, mask sets. <laughs> He's done a really good build of this. Actually, I've been following this one because mm. I love this kit. I think I like watching other people build it these days, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I like watching other people build it. So, oh look, nice, fun build. There we go, hmm. decals, using the old uh, liquid film look. Yeah. They might have been all right, they might have been fine. Nice job, look at that. Yeah. On the old rescribe in front. Mm. Look. See? Oh, oh, know them well, my best friends, those three. <laughs> the other girl ones? Yeah. Yeah. So I've had mine there for so long, I don't know what I'd do without them now. <laughs> nice work. Look, the crew. I don't, is, does anybody, do Tarangas do a two seat, seven second big in? Yeah, I think they might, you know. I was going to say, I think I so, but I'm not 100%. I know I did the review of the single seat one, didn't I? Mm. Yeah, definitely the single seat. I've done the brecky one. Oh, yeah, I think I don't know. I've got a feeling they do, oh, but yeah, I'm gonna butchers in seventy-two scale. No, they're doing forty-eight. I'm sure they did the forty-eight one. Sorry about me, uh, compressor. Just do me a push. All right, hold on. There we go. Oh, DCS. Yeah. Know it well. There we go. Good job. Right, Hold on. there we go. What else have we got? We've got the little Meng Cutie Range warship, got the Missouri. This is by Eric working on this one. Ooh, lots of see, guns. I can't see a two seat Taranga Spigan. Oh, especially on, apparently, special I'll be doing two seat Bigan. Oh, right. seven, which would be the Taranga's kit, which is so. the Taranga's yeah. kit, yeah. Uh, Green is doing cut the dogs. Yeah. Are they Alsatians or? Wait. Yeah, are they German, German shepherds, shepherds or Alsatians? Which one's popular? <laughs> <laughs> nice. They look really, really nicely sculpted, actually. Yeah, really they cool. do actually look good, don't they? Yeah. Can you send them to me? I could do it then for a diorama. <laughs> yeah, he needs them because I need one of them to go along with my uh, MRAP with the crew. It, yeah. That one sitting down, look. Or yeah, it'd be perfect. Huh? It's, it's not one cocking its leg. Having a, <laughs> yeah, could you sculpt him to do that? Peel the tyre. <laughs> there we go. Original matchbox, look, for the Puma. 
that's a proper from the 70s. I remember Look, it's I got mean, the roadway. This is the one you had made, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've sort of got a half built, not finished one of them. There you go. Proper bases. Wow. Oh, that's brilliant. I love the yeah. armor. There we go. Look. Kits with bases, that's what you need. Uh, yeah, it's like proper modeling. There you go. Looking good there. Well done, Green. Looking fantastic. Okay, we have a couple more. Uh, Meng Egg Bomber Run. So a few kits going on the go. So we've got the uh, B24, the B17, and the Lank. Meng's Cutie Range. Go like that. Very nice. I say, I think I do prefer the Meng series rather than eggplants. Yes. Yeah. I think I prefer the cutie range over the, the eggplants. And I've built loads of eggplants over the years now. My lord, have we ever. But uh, yeah, I've never done one of the Meng ones yet. A few moments ago, because they're quite funny. Like those. Looking good with all of those cracking builds. And uh, last one Dornia 18 matchbox. There we go from Colin. Nice. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the look at the I'll tell you what, decals look good. They do. Better than mine. Mm. I've got two sets and both of mine are wrecked. There we go. Ooh, Ooh, look, look that, you're not baby. really going to use the old airbrush. <laughs> That's a classic one. Oh my <laughs> lord. Look at that. Cockroaches <laughs> of the that. paint world unite. I bet camera. every one of those will be fine with a good mix. Even that yellow one that's all yeah. <laughs> yes, my lord. You see, we do knock, we do not pump roll paints, but they do stand the test of time. Well, oh, yeah, they are. Exactly, and bomb proof. Yeah, the odd small fit issue. Uh, that's minor technicality. That's it. It'll be fine. There you go. See, scrubbed up all right. Yeah. Oh, transport carriage. I was yeah. going to say, but I thought, it was a, oh, it's a window, but it's a transport carriage. It's fine. Yeah, he's scratch built his own. He's done Very good. Well done. Well, what we do is we'll pop back and we're having a look at those uh, later on in the show. And then obviously we'll have a look at those tonight as well. Well done, everybody. Great work as always with the builds. <laughs> good job. <clears throat> Uh, any, any questions in uh, anything? I don't know. Is anyone, any questions anywhere? How is uh, my, what's wait, Facebook somebody, doing? Somebody's asked where my Dornier is. It's just down there in its box still. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a little busy. Ready for I, am, I will build it though, because I'm going to build it for the love for hmm. uh, Mr. Bull is watching us on Facebook. Oh, he's finished work, has he? Is he? Ugh. Uh, so yes, hello to everybody in Facebook. Give us a thumbs up or whatever you do on Facebook. Heck, yes, first time we've like, done this simultaneously. We're, we're streaming over everything, it's weird. Do we get a like and subscribe? Yeah, do we get a like and subscribe? Does anyone do thumbs it? up and hearts and things? Moon. Does he get hearts and things? Right, give us a heart if you're on Facebook. We want to see a heart oh, thing pop up. What's the thing? Did you say nay for what? Russell's on the. He's watching Ancient Aliens on TV in the background. I wonder if anyone sells Tutankhamun kits. Now, yeah. with the Africa Sig group build coming up, that'd be worth having a bit of a. Didn't Airfix do a Tutankhamun? No. No. Right. Can I just answer this question for it? Because he's asked it before from Nick. Regarding MIG Primer thinness, I noticed Phil tried the old MIG Primer on Thursday. I tried the new MIG One Shot Primer with self leveling thinners and it didn't work. No. It doesn't. You need the polymer primer because that other one, I think, is like the Vallejo, is it? Yeah. Which is. Got the there's this polyurethane. Apparently, I don't ask yes. me what it is, I don't know. I, but I this don't. is polymer. The other ones, which I've only got a little bottle of these days, is actually polyurethane. Different poly. Pretty poly. Different. Your parrot is dead. No, he's just resting. <laughs> Quick random question. Any scale, I'm guessing. If you were going to build a B24, which one would you get? 
a B24. Wasn't Matt yeah. once going to build the B24 from Hobby Boss? Huge Me? One. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you had your name down on that. I don't know, actually, yeah. He did, didn't I, I, he? I, I, He's dodged that yeah. one. <laughs> I, I don't recall any of that. <laughs> you must have dreamt it. Oh, yeah. oh, is that what it was? I'm pretty sure you said you were going to have a punt for that. To be honest with you, uh, just to answer this question, he wants a 172nd Azagawa kit. Yes. That the, is the, best. the 48th one's not been brought up to scratch because there's still only the old monogram one, which, yeah. you know, it's a bad kit, but it's it's old. And then, obviously, if you want to do a massive one, there's the Obby Boss one. But I would probably say the Azagawa. Yeah, I would. The Azagawa same second one because you yeah. built the academy one, didn't you? Mini craft the academy old one. one. It was the Ed R Rebox, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, James. You can mix Tamiya with LP with MRP. Mm -hmm. And somebody just asked what time I am demoing my primer in a, probably about ten minutes. But I'm not using lacquers with it. I'm using it with because Phil did a a lacquer test with literally the MIG one, which I think's not far off the same stuff. So I'm just going to do it with um, just what I've just been using, just normal. Airbrush thinner, acrylic. We're, do, we're going up. I'm going acrylic today rather than the hot stuff. Can't you just try it with a bit of lacquer? I tell you what, I can't it. even scratch it. Seriously, it's bulletproof. Yeah, I in. Uh, I'll put some in a, a separate pot and do it yeah, just to just, make sure just, it mixes. In fact, yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it now, so I ain't got to faff in a bit. So I'll put me over it. Like, seriously, you're... this is so strong. This stuff with it's... lacquer in it, I can't scratch it. It's the future. It's bulletproof. It's the future. Oh, like, seriously, what, I, think I can't start. believe how hard this has actually gone. This has been, when do we do it? Thursday night? Thursday night, yeah. So Thursday night I sprayed this, messing around with it, and it is absolutely, hold on, where's my cameras? Cameras? In right, your own time, hello. So there you go. I'll be using the sand one, desert sand primer polymer. But look, I can't even scratch that. With leveling. <laughs> That's how strong that is. And normally this stuff literally just rolls off, but it's bulletproof. If you were guys were watching, this is the stuff we hand painted on the thick stuff. Oh, you're just gonna sand it today. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I don't have to now because it starts bulletproof, I can tell you. But do you remember on here when we did the show I scraped it? Yes. Yes, you did, yeah. You're not now, are you? I just can't. to let everybody just literally. to let everybody know if this works, we, we do sell this in the store. <laughs> In every different colour you can imagine, don't we, Andy? We do. Um, Phil will have a look in the uh, shop in a bit. Yeah, I'll show you in a sec. Just to, uh, t Tim's asked a question. What do you think to Alclad, Alclad 2 paints? Uh, just had a bottle of them, seems to be the same as Mr. Colour, uh, MRP. Mm. Yeah, it is pretty much the same as MRP. Uh, the one thing is I've, um, I've got some other metallics. And you know, metal color, the met, met, metallics, and yeah, they, they work, yeah, pretty much exactly the same as MRP. So, the one thing I will say about these polymer primers, you really have got to give them a good, yes, yeah. up. you can see Wait, on step. this one how it's the different, you know, I'm almost yeah. out now, but you see the lumps in it, it properly needs waking up. So there we go, I've just sanded it, it sands beautifully, yeah, yeah. I thought it would, but you ain't got to wait three days to sand it either. It'll no. probably sand with lacquer. I know reading instructions, if you're going to use it with just normal acrylic thinners, you've got to leave it 24 hours. Yeah. Um, and then sand it. But with the lacquer, I think it just speeds it up and changes the molecular structure. I don't know, whatever the technical term is in it. See. So, Trouble, trouble a little bit in there. So, okay, leveling for near. Yeah. And we'll see if it works with the AK one. Ooh, don't know. Gone a bit thick. Oh, is it thickening up? Not really, it's Drop still smooth. Oh, still yeah. smooth, it just needs a bit of thinner than it, I think. I didn't put a lot of thinner in it, let's have a look. Oh, 
No pressure, Matt, but Les is watching now as well. <laughs> you see that board? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's been fine. Absolutely fine, look. Phew. Right, quick, airbrush it on something. I am, I am, <laughs> I am. Yes, I did. See that? Yeah. There goes the Hawkeye again. Hawkeye disc is getting sprayed now. I haven't even got any pressure on that, that would help, wouldn't it? Sprays at low pressure. <laughs> I'm doing turning it up a little bit, to be honest. Definitely works. Definitely works. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Oh, we'll have to give it a sandy test later. Oh, well, that one, yeah. So, does that thin with other thinners? What do you mean? Well, well, as well, in what? Well, because obviously when we tried um, the other one, we tried it with normal lacquer thinners, it wouldn't thin it. I would say it will do exactly the same as the MIG one. Cause so, it's you a reckon it will thick up and turn to glue? Yeah. Yeah, this is a AK primer with mystical level, mystical leveling thinners that Matt's using there. Yeah. It's so brilliant, but it works. Because mm. what was the one you did? You use a grey one, didn't you? Yeah, the only one I've got here is the uh, it's Mig Two Double O Two. And it just says waterborne polymer surface primer. And as I say, if you try and put normal lacquer thinners or rapid drying thinners, things like that, it doesn't work. But yeah. for some reason, you put leveling thinners into it, lacquer leveling thinners, and it works. But we tried it then with um, Tamiya's, and it didn't work. So it's a bit finicky of what it works with. Yeah. But I, it boils, no it's absolutely stunning. It's amazing stuff. I'll tell you what I have noticed with it. Can you hear that? Yeah. You know, because this has got colour in it. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds a daft thing. I don't know if that's affecting the thinning, because that is... I mean, I've just unloaded that, but yeah. I don't think that went on as nice as yours. Yeah. But we'll see what it dries like. Yeah, I don't think you'll be able to do... I don't know, because can you see that, look? Because I thinned mm. it and it's going thick already. Yeah, it's thickening up. Did yours thicken up? Or no, was that was it. That was the whole point. It didn't thicken up. It stayed as it was. Yeah, this one's thickening up. But I don't know if it's because it's got a coloured pigment in it. Yeah, maybe. So... Mm. don't know. We'll see. And it seems a bit orange peely. Yeah. Let me dry it off and see. But one thing, it dries off fast. Hmm. So take it that one you've got, the MIG one. Is that discontinued? Sure, for a minute. You can press it. Is that discontinued now then? Because it's moved to the one shot. I don't know. I must admit, I've had this kicking around and, for years. Andy will Google it. What's it called? It's called Surface Primer. Waterborne Polymer Surface Primer. But I've got a code for it. It's MIG2002. It's got a QR code on it. Hold on, I'll zap it. Is that MIG2002 is... It just, they do the one shot now, don't they? No, I think it's still available. All oh, right, okay. Although apparently Savari can't open it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Plenty of places with it still. Oh, they're out of stock. They're out of stock. They're out of stock. 
everywhere would be out of stock of it now. <laughs> I could do with a bottle. I've run out of primers. <clears throat> I mean the green, the Vallejo primers are complete. It won't it won't thin mm. with leveling from the Vallejo primer, won't it? it? Turns to glue. Yeah. I mean, have you got your little bit there? Just drop some in a pot and put some leveling thinner in it because it. I, I did try it at home, and it um, it weren't happy, shall we say? No, it does seem like a lot of places are out of stock of it, so possibly it's not available anymore. Mm. And anyway, we're doing a quiz tonight. There'll be no demo in later, will there? We're quizzing. It's quiz night. Quiz night. Drink and quiz night. Sit here with a bottle of red wine. I'll be fine. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> hey, what, though? It is pretty much dry, look. Hmm. Right, what, have you got any gauzy clear there, Matt? No. No. Well, that's fun, then. Christ, what did they put in... Um... I am sure. Chip in fluid, because when it dries, it goes rock hard. <laughs> right, hold on. I've got to wake this up. This has been sat in my drawer for the last 10 years. Right, I'm going to blow my airbrush through because I think it's going to clog it up. Right, so what are we trying? Rapid thinners first? Uh, lack of self leveling, yeah? I would just try self leveling. None of the others I don't think work. Right, okay. Hold on. Right. 7 o'clock start tonight. Yeah, 7.30, isn't it? 7.30, yeah. Yeah. That's British summertime, which is DMT plus one. Yes. Right, okay. So, so it's this now... Is... Go on. Well, so it's now quarter past four our time. Yes. Give you a reference. So this is the one we're going to try now, which I don't think will work for a second, because this is acrylic polyurethane, as in oh, rubber, right. surface primer. Oh, that's horrible stuff, that stuff. <clears throat> I've got some of that here. In a big tub. Yeah, they do the big yeah. stuff. And I've never got on with it. No, I haven't either. But, there we go. Okay, so... Going in, and it is doing something funny. Hold on, if I go full screen. Look, it's made a funny pattern in there. I don't know quite what. <laughs> Yeah, it's doing that same as last time. When If you put um, normal thinners into, it sort of goes a bit like, see it ripping on mm. the side there? It goes a bit like uh, olive oil. Yeah. <laughs> Balsanic vinegar. <laughs> uh, where's the brush? Find a brush to wreck. And you can see it's not even trying to going like putty. Yeah. It's just turned to grit. It don't like it. It don't like it in them, does it? It don't like it up them. <laughs> no, it definitely don't work. I did try it at home in the shed. Yeah, it's, it's just going it's, it's gritty just not, and uh, lumpy and now it's turning to paste. I think it's like, say, it's that poly... Polyurethane. That's the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Poly, poly. doesn't like polyurethane. Nobody likes polyurethane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just not working. You can see it's just separating on itself and trying to get away, but it's turned to grit. So if you imagine this was in your airbrush, these lumps, yeah, oh, God. you're yeah, going to be spending a month trying to clean out your airbrush. You would be in a world of pain. Yeah, she would. So, it says here on the bottle you must spray it at least 20 centimetres away from the model. Christ, it would be like grit. <laughs> hey, I thought you were going to say at like 50 psi or something. <laughs> I mean, you might as well spray it from the next room. Yeah, it, seems, it definitely seems a different beast to your MIG one, you know, the AK. Yeah. As in, it's worked, it's dried okay. It's going to be sandable, but it just seems to thicken up very quick with the leveling thinner. Yes. It's so, got product safety thing on it. It just says X5. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. So, like I say, it won't work. You'll just have to. 
keep thinning it, I think. I think that's the... Yeah. Then you have to... Because if it's going to start thickening up, the trouble you've yeah. got is it's going to thicken up as you're using it, and at some point... In your airbrush. It's yeah. going to kill your airbrush, yeah. Exactly. So probably not recommended. But it's an interesting test, isn't it? Hmm. So, as I was going to do, we will clear that one out and just get out of it like this. <clears throat> right. Right. Go. So, back to round two. <laughs> so we use the same primer, but this time I'm going to do it with the airbrush, acrylic airbrush thinner. Look to that. a lot nicer yeah yeah Round actually thinning um, acrylic paints again. Mm. Yeah, it's a totally different technique, isn't it? It's a totally different thickness. I think that's what it is. It's not spraying it, it's just how thick your paint is that you think you can get through the airbrush. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, again, if you're not a, a, a fan of lacquers and, you know, the smell and all the other stuff, then, to be honest with you, this has got quite a nice smell to it, even though you're not really not supposed to be breathing it in, but... It's just going to take a bit longer to dry, like it says on the bottle, so... Yeah. But if it's anyway speeding it up... We had any questions? Mm. I was just discussing this polyurethane primer stuff. I still prime in XF whatever paint me, so. So Russell's just said he's just tried that primer with some X20A thinners and it mixed fine. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Well, the, one you're using or... the one that Phil's using, I think. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, nice shiny finish on that, Matt. Because it's still wet. <laughs> yeah, what I mean is it's nice level finish, isn't it? Mm. It does level out all right, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, you know, for an acrylic primer, yeah. it's definitely got more going for it than the polyurethane ones. Mm. So, you know... I think if that's the route, because we've been looking for a decent acrylic primer, haven't we? Let's be honest. Oh. And they've all got their Achilles heels to be, a, you know, over a, a lacquer one, but not everybody obviously can use lacquers, can they? So hmm. it's finding the best of, you know, a, a bad situation. <laughs> yes. So, 
And I think that's, you know, to be honest, that's what we're trying to experiment with here as well, is that to find a product that is, uh, you know, that goes alongside, because I say a lot of people have said to us, you know, it's all very well, us all using lacquers, but they don't use lacquers, what would we recommend? And so that's why somewhat we've been doing a bit of this recently is trying to find the best of the acrylic range of everything, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. Like I say, we need something to complement the acrylic range. So, yeah. and primer wise, I mean, what you got, you got your Steinol resin, you've got the Vallejo stuff. And I think, like I said, these are all polyurethane based, aren't they? Which is that latexy stuff. Mm. Um, so. Well, apparently, forget all yeah. of this, because you can't buy uh, MIG anyway. The polymer stuff has been discontinued for the Steinol Res stuff. Right. Yeah, I, I did figure that. Oh. So, that's irrelevant. We'll bin that. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap that. We'll edit that out. Yeah. So, although it's the best stuff available, unfortunately, you can't have it anymore. Yeah. So. Hey, Timo's case. Timo's just put that he's, he's tried thinning Steinol Res with SLT and it works. It is sanded in about 10 minutes. Yeah, it is. I know. Absolutely. It's great. Problem is, though, the stuff goes off in the bottle after a couple of weeks. So, mm. so, yes, that's the trouble with that. When we did all the testing of it, it's, you know, it, it's not a viable product that goes off. So, yes. Tom's got nothing to worry about because he's just said Tamiya acrylics are good. That's what I prime with. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. the whole point, isn't it? We've said about this before is that people, I think, get hung up on like the next greatest thing, yet one of the best ones is just using Tamiya acrylic. Mm. Somebody put up in there, yeah, Ralph says, what's the best rattle can grey primer? The best oh. one is Tamiya. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Because it is absolutely Tamiya beautiful. Stuff. They're doing white or grey, and it is absolutely beautiful stuff. It goes on like so, silk. Um, but, uh, the other thing as well is the guns ones, which are surface surfaces in the mm. camp, you can get. They're good. The trouble you get, because obviously people are saying about it now, uh, GB Models is saying about Halford's grey and white primers. They are good. Trouble is they flood and they stink. So they're not an option to do it in your modeling room. You have to sort of do those outside. Uh, and again, if you haven't got a place particularly to spray it, that's out of the wind and all the rest of it, they're horrible stuff to use. Because I've got a version that I use here. It's not Alpha Prime, it's a different one. But it's beautiful stuff. It sprays, it dries instantly, it's really nice. But you can't use it in the house. Because you'll flood, a, you know, fill up a, a filter in one, you know? Thing is, it's bad though. I don't think Tamiya smells nice. No, they're all pretty because it's the propellant in them it's as well. It's the propellant, it? yeah, that's the problem. You've got the propellant, haven't you? Um, none, of, yeah, none of them you want to be spraying indoors. Mm. So. Oh dear, Carl's done a bit of a melon on your site, apparently. Why? Uh, what, what, what's he put, Nathan? Read it. He's just put his wrong email address on his order, so he's not got the order confirmation. Oh. He sent him an email about it, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I'll pick it up with the rest of them next week. Don't worry about it. Obviously, we can't send anything until Tuesday. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. what I'll do is I'll update your email, but it'll go and all the rest of it. So, it's not as good as the one I have where somebody put down the wrong email address. So, consequently, I have the gentleman's email who was his address he put down asking what the hell is going on and I want to be removed. He got really shitty about it. It was like, <laughs> God, somebody's accidentally put a wrong email address. He's got the order confirmation through and has then pointed out he hasn't placed the order or anything else like that. And he's checked his credit card and nothing's been taken off of it and everything else. And I demand to be removed. It was like, Jesus. It's all right. It's just a simple accident. Calm down. Obviously, it's a bit harshly worded. Yeah, it was. It was a proper, like, you know, get my demand that I'm removed and I want proof. Like, right. <laughs> How do you that with PayPal? You <laughs> That's a tricky one. When you delete someone, how do you prove? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. 
I had one that a couple of months ago, just after Christmas, and they were demanding to be removed because apparently they'd used some third party bit of software and it shows that we have their details. So I checked and it's like, well, look, take it up with PayPal because they've got your details, not me, you know? So, yes. <laughs> Timo said that he thinned his standard res last year when I did the uh, trial, put it in the glass bottle and it still works. Right. Is it with, is it with Tamia? Uh, with, is he? What SLT? Oh, the 11th sorry, yeah. Maybe that's given it better shelf life. Mm, yeah. Maybe. I mean, it, it is the SLT stuff, isn't it? Mm. To, see, to have the silver bullet or whatever you call it. To... Yeah, it does. I don't know what is in. And it is, it's just theirs as well. It's not Tamia, is it? Because the Tamia one doesn't work. No. So. Hmm. No, it's odd. It's odd what's in it, but there you go. If it works, it works. Mm -hmm. It's one of them, you know, like people who have lots of paints like me and Andy and Phil and Nathan and everybody. Is it, is it just spend a few hours just playing and see yeah, what testing. things what. Yeah. And making a note so you know and what works and what doesn't. Because, you know, you might surprise yourself and think, oh, that's... Uh, you know, that's all right, or that's, you know, chewing gum. Hmm. Um, Paul's just given Will Wilco's um, rattle cam primer. <coughs> Thumbs up. It's cheap. Works. You know, yeah. I mean, the Games Workshop used to do a night. I used to use Games Workshop rattle cam primer. Hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I stopped using rattle cams because you just... When you kind yeah, of... That's the thing. I think you waste more. Than yeah, you you're do. okay if you're doing a large project. Like when I do my props, I always use a rattle can because you can just flood it over it. But if you're using it on something that size, it's a bit overkill. I usually <laughs> do stuff that size. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Not good for me at all. Um, just to answer Roger's question, when we put another order in with said company, we're waiting for him to have a restock because that's where we obviously get the... Um, Surface primers, leveling thinners, it's the same place. Hmm. So let's wait for them to have a restock. So, and six, can you be, go on, sorry, Nick. I reckon another six months, and hopefully all this container ship mess or worked its way through the system. How many months? Six. <laughs> Roughly normal, about the time of Telford. I don't know. What is that? That fabled model show. <laughs> the first model show of the year, maybe, I don't know. I'm not going there. I'm not going to speculate. <laughs> Kevin says, happy uh, Easter or oh, a fine collection of models on show in Matt's cabinet. That's quite correct there, Kev. Those uh, uh, transits look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think that was quite what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's all about. <laughs> Not like that one, is there? This I thing think here. maybe, yes. You know, bit... <laughs> <laughs> one where we going to try some winter whitewash on it and see if it worked. Yeah, I still think we should give it a better winter coat. Just, we'll do the entire thing for it. Hey, It'd be fine. It needs, it needs some yellow snow. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's in his car already, tra travelling up to a big... Yeah, he's coming to grab them all. <laughs> Keith's asking who's up there. Covid jab. Got mine. Got mine a week today. I think I've been forgotten about. Shell still can't book her. She's tried again. But in Nottingham, she won't let you book unless you're over no. 50. Hey, book it in Do tell her to book it in Doncaster. She'll get one. Hmm. Yeah, mine's a week today. I'm not old enough to get mine yet. No, nor me. <laughs> I'm too yeah, young. Yeah, but, but you are in if you live in Doncaster. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Doncaster have obviously got through the 50-year-olds a bit quicker than everywhere else. Mm. Not, many, not many of them don't live that long up here. We all got killed off last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It'll come. Soon. It will. It will definitely come. I've got my second one on the 11th of May. Mm. 
Anyway, so you should be ringing up to book yours because you missed your phone call. I know. I know. That's why you've not had yours because you didn't answer the phone. Well, I was too busy. <laughs> I was too busy filming. <laughs> I get there and get a load of answer phones. So this is the NHS booking hotline. Do you know what? You know, do you know to book mine? Leslie was on the phone. Yeah. Hmm. For half an hour, I think, if not longer, because she was like, "You are one of 20. Oh, it right. was one of them. And going through, she just put a speaker, took it in her office. Hmm. I said, "I'll give me a shout when the when they answer it." Do you know what I mean? When they're ready. And I bet it was half an hour. Hmm. So Maybe... let me get a try. To book yours, Leslie was on the phone for half an hour. She, well, she ran the doctors. <laughs> All right, can you not book it online? The well, thing is, if you go online, because I've tried it, because I thought, well, I'll do it online, it comes up and it's fine until you put your date of birth in. And it currently, yeah, yeah. it comes up saying, I'm sorry, you're currently not eligible for your vaccine. Yeah, that's what it says to Shell, but she's also tried phoning. Mm. And they asked her, uh, and they started asking some questions and said, yeah, because you're over, under 50, mm. can I do it? No. Only just. Mm. <laughs> Russell said, 59 <laughs> and not had mine. Been told on the danger list, but not in danger. So crazy yet, people two doors away. You, Russell, Russell, if you're in the UK, everybody over the age of 50 can have them there. Yeah, that's it. It's all yeah. eligible. Just go on the website. If you're over 50, it's no book you. Yeah, I think mine's next month. I think we'll be next month. The 40 pluses, won't we? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it'd be May, wouldn't it? They're all about racking it back out again. Ed's got a question about decanting Tamiya Rattle Primer, um, letting it gas off and then use it for an airbrush. Yeah, you can, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, but make sure you let it fully gas off first. Yes, fully, fully, fully gas off. Fully gas off. Yeah. But yeah, it, should, it will work fine. You might have to drop, put a drop of thinners in it, as in lack of thinners. Mm. It'll work fine. Yeah. Call 911. Book your call. That's mm. what Neil said, look. Uh, could tell the middleman call nine nine nine. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah, Shall I will we? speak for that side of it through my other I'm half. Bit, do I'm not do jab. that. Yeah, when's my jab? <laughs> yeah, nine one one, Neil. That's what you said, isn't it? Nine one one. Well, no, it's one one nine, isn't it? I know, I'm messing. Oh. Oh, please. <laughs> that, that's all. Awesome. I did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, look, Peter's in. He said, sorry I'm late. My wife has insisted I help paint the fence. Like Tom Sawyer. Okay. Did it know what? In. No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. <laughs> I day to paint the fence. It's sunny, but not too hot. Mm. How do you know when Rattle Cam Primer is fully gassed off? It stops, it stops making... Bubbling cauldron type things isn't it yeah it, it stops bubbling it stops literally bubbling and doing things so yeah i presume it means if he's decanting it is he yeah yeah aren't you just better stuff getting the tamia primer rather than trying to degas it there get this yeah. stuff yeah but you can't get it yeah no, in this country Right. Let me just pop over to. Has anybody else got any more questions? So I'm up, just popping into hey. Facebook land. They're a bit we're behind up. us, so we've got a bit more of a lag, I think. Mm. Uh, where are we? Hold on, I've lost the thing. Uh, hmm. uh, there it is. No, it's all quite over in there. Is it? Yes. Actually, it's very quiet in Facebook land. Is it? That's what it. about in YouTube land? Uh, no, YouTube's all right. Yeah. Uh, can one join and subscribe to the forum as a German? Uh, or is there a very uh, EU regulation varying us from that? Basically, sorry, you can't join if you're in the EU. As crazy as it is. It costs us more than your subscription to do it. That's basically the reason. I had somebody the other day talk about it. That's the real reason to it is I have to pay a company and register in the EU and all the rest of it. And when you seriously just look at the cost of doing that for the subscription cost, and 
you know, it, it just it's not viable. So, unfortunately, no. not in the EU. So, we've got a couple on here. Will we be stocking any VMS VMS stuff? Mm. Quite possibly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what Watch is that? Face. <laughs> Yeah, and what is that aircraft behind you? I that guess one. that's the metal side. It's a, it's a B-25, yes. Yeah. I got it from Ria. Mm -hmm. When we went... I like these tin signs. I think they look quite cool. Mm. And it and it doesn't break. And it doesn't break. You no, know, like the picture that was there that decided to um, vacate the wall and smash. What, throw himself off the wall? <laughs> it did literally throw itself off the wall, didn't it, Andy? Is that when the train think, went past? I think I knocked it down twice and Matt knocked it down how many times? <laughs> yeah, it worked, to be honest, it wasn't the best place to put it, was it? <laughs> it's exactly the same height as the back of the chair. So every time you moved back, yeah. the back of the chair caught it. And... Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's been changed for a tin sign with, you know, a bit more... <laughs> yes. <laughs> a bit more sturdy. Uh, Tom says, I still got time to do a mottling tutorial. No. Not in 20 minutes. Uh, your best bet, to be honest, is have a look at the FW190 and things like that build on the site. Because on that, I've done a full mottling job on that one. What about Nathan's bid? Or Nathan's bid. Paul's well, asking how you move a centre mould off a Tamiya 112th rubber tyre. With a grinder. Personally, I bung them in the <laughs> freezer. They yeah. go hard and then attack it with quite a coarse sanding stick. And just whip round it. You might have to bung it back in because as soon as you warm up by handling it, it goes pliable, but it's enough normally to get the center seam out of it. And say, or if not, uh, might as well charge. Had to charge it today because I thought I might need it, but as well, using a oh, that full charge. Hey. Sounds like my old 50 motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so just have a have a wheel and then zip him round with it. So, for washing purposes, will testers enamel thinner work with Abteal and oils? Yes. yes. Yes, it will. Yeah. Again, the thing is, with using Abteal lung oils, is that the one mistake I made a few years ago when I first tried it, is not to use a cheap enamel thinners, because that's where I went wrong. If you use a more refined one, they work so much better. You don't get any tide marks. They don't go at all gritty or anything else. But if you use a cheap oil, uh, cheap thinners, because it, it's an expensive oil, it just doesn't work. It's not happy, is it? And it's then not happy. Did... And I made that mistake because, to be honest, when I first used um, Abtyla, I wasn't impressed at all. I thought, I'm not being funny. It's no different from a cheapy art one down the road. Then I used proper thinners in it, and oh, yeah, big difference there. It does, not it? And then Steve's asked about for, um, thinking of using oils for weathering for the first time now that you will be getting the 5.0 tours back in soon. As I mainly do World War II aircraft, what colours would you recommend getting from uh, as a start? Well, I'd just say get that aircraft starter set, wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, Starship Filth. <laughs> Starship Filth. Do you get smoke in the... Um... Aircraft weathering set. Yes, you do. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, the the Luftwaffe one, you get smoke in it, I think. Yeah, got any extra critics left, have you? Mm. Paul keeps wanting you to get some old extra critics out and spray them for a laugh. Why, why, yeah, why would we want to do that? <laughs> no, I haven't got any, to be <laughs> honest. A new ones up the water spray. I think for your oil colours, if you do lots of greens, blue and yellow is quite useful. If you're getting into yeah. your oil paints for the first time. Do Any... quite... Sorry, Dave, go on. But I'm thinking if you look at your colour wheels and start moving to complementary and contrasting colours, then that you can do that. That's quite good for weathering on you with the oils. Mm. So I've got the blue and the yellow for doing the Luftwaffe greens. I don't know what browns. If you if you're going to weather a brown with oils, would you just yellow use brown? Yellow for fading it. Still yellow, yeah. Yellow fades it, doesn't it, and stuff. I mean, um, Graham's put here. Would you, you 
Humbro enamel thinners we've had to it'll work, but that Umbro stuff vicious. That's a vicious yeah, it, is. Thinner. it will work, but yeah. No, I've, take, I've taken enamel um lack of paints off with the uh, Umbro thinners. It's good for cleaning your brushes, the Humbro thinners. Horrible stuff. It's it's yeah, it's harsh stuff. I've got some up here somewhere. You really want artist grade sort of the re like say, refined stuff. You go to an artist shop, you can get it, can't you? Yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. Bloody horrible. Yes. I'll yeah. tell you what I've got. I've got their old tins. Do you remember the tins with the screw yeah. top lid? I've got yeah. them that's somewhere. Yeah. Think got in the shed. Tap on it, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I've once you taken, say, lack of paints off with that. Hmm? Yeah. This stuff here? Yeah, that's the one. Something yeah. Like, like a nice... Yeah, refined one. Yeah, refined oh, you used to got one, mate. Yeah, yeah I used to got it. cleaning brushes after doing ah, that. There you go. Mm. I mean, so you think, right, how harsh that stuff is, yeah, yeah to be thinning Humbrol tinlets, because yeah. that's what it's yeah. for, isn't yeah. it? So that's how powerful an enamel thinner you need to really thin a Humbrol paint. Mm. Yes. No wonder it stinks. It's aggressive stuff, that. Yes, it definitely is. Uh, hold on. What time are we starting the quiz then? 7.30. Well, we'll start that at 8, won't we? <laughs> I don't know. It's up to Nate, isn't it? What time, Nate, are you ready for quiz night? It's I know you give you a gold lame jacket to pick it up. <laughs> it's a 30 questions tonight. Just to mention about the quiz though, no answering the questions in the chat. Yeah, yeah, don't say anything until we're doing the answers. Okay, quick one here. Shipping to Ireland is £12 for a sanding stick starter set. Any cheaper shipping to Ireland? Question mark. Not sure no. if you've answered this. No. It is what it is, guys. We it can't do anything what... about shipping costs. No, fortunately not. That is what it is. Uh, 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 thanks for all the videos and the live shows. No problem at all. Uh, are all of this year's Airfix releases going to be as late and limited as the Beaufort was? Who knows? <sighs> Again. We have no idea. No idea. Welcome to the world we live in at the moment. Uh, has anyone ever tried to order an Airfix in the USA? I've tried emailing them twice with no reply. No. I presume he means Airfix. He's actually put Aerolax, but... <laughs> that would be a completely uh, different company. Uh, hi guys, I'm new to the hobby and just primed the parts of my Tamiya Yamaha XV1000 with, unfortunately, Humbrol Matte Primer. How long will it take uh, till I can begin building and painting that I hand painted? Well, I don't right. know. Look, on, look on a calendar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, calendar months? Um, I, it'd be one of those. It depends on lots of environmental factors, i.e. where it is, dry, if it's got a bit of airflow around it and all the rest of it. But basically, keep poking it until you can hold it in your hand and it doesn't feel sticky. But I always give it what I call the thing, because you can obviously do this and it feels dry, but if you want to hold it in your hand just for a couple of minutes, if you take your hand away and it doesn't feel sticky or anything else like that, you're good to go. If it feels a bit tacky, you know, sticky, then you probably want to give it a bit more. So it could take a couple of days, might take a week. <laughs> Has been known for things like that to take months, but again, depends on how thick it's on, you know, lots of different factors into that one. Mm. Uh, hi, God. Sorry, go on. On our chat, Lynn says, uh, that's why I have not ordered any of the attacker paint from the PM store. I think it's the shipping what? costs. Oh, shipping costs. Oh, right, right. Mm. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, mm. shipping costs are just out of our hands, and they've gone, they've literally trebled over this past year or so. Mm. And it's, it's annoying and frustrating to us, as it is to you. I mean, when we see that, yeah, we're sending a 30 pound kit to America and it's costing 40, 50 quid in postage. It, mm. it, it, it is, it's soul breaking, but it's out of our hands. Yeah, we, we 
charge what we have to pay and you know yes also yeah keep dolphin friendly buy local if you can like we've always said isn't it is that i know obviously a lot of people like to support us and everything else like that but sometimes it's literally not worth it not with the price of postage and all the rest of it you know remember your carbon footprint <laughs> yeah i don't know who sells a tacker out in the state but probably somebody yeah don't prep sell it I think he's yeah, trying to. Oh, is he? He's trying know. to get it. I don't know, to be honest. Not on his ear, but, you know. Why has postage got up? Because there's no flights, David. Yeah, there's no like, planes flying. Like, That's the whole point. I think people yeah. forget the big picture of this is because, honestly, look on flight radar. There's no planes going anywhere. And normally in the hold of planes, there's posts, there's parcels, there's food, yeah. there's all sorts that go along with package holiday flights. I never yeah. forget the time, literally, talking to Dominican. I was in Dominican, and if you've ever been to that airport a few years ago now, I know they've got a new terminal now at Punta Cana, but it used to be literally a mud hut with some straw on the roof, and that was departures. And you can see the entire flight line along there pineapples under our which would have been two e flight going home was solid pineapples and it turns out they're all for tesco's so and it was like you don't think that as you're on your package holiday flight you know it's not like a normal freighter or anything else like that but it's underneath your seat it's loaded with pineapples all going back but it was mm. pallets and pallets and pallets of pineapples but who knew but again, those flights aren't going now, even domestic flights, which normally hold all the extra bits. So that's why, you know, these companies like them are probably using other flights and it takes up and it's that thing, isn't it? Price, supply yeah. and demand. Of course it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, but like people are saying, it's when everything does eventually get back to normal, will the prices come down? Well, I doubt, doubt it. it. I doubt it. I, yeah, same thing, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> They'll go down slower than they went up. Mm. If, yeah, if they do. So, you know. Um, yeah, it's a bit out of our own. It's one of them things, though. If, if Sounds daft, but if you actually want the product, and um, you might have to pay the postage, because he's just said, I really like to order some Attacker singles, but my local shop is trying to expand his range, but he picked up the Revel line. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. And if you think postage is expensive, you'll see how much we've had to pay to get... <laughs> Cheap as chips. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Andy makes a fair point. You know, we've got this huge order coming in from AK, and it's cost us an absolute fortune to get it here. It does go both ways. Don't think it's just the shipping costs to you guys. The shipping costs that we're, we're getting stuff in now and coming in is absolutely horrendous. Because I must admit, when they said how much shipping was, Jesus, it was like really. Yeah. <laughs> is it coming by Bugatti? You know? <laughs> yeah, it's coming by uh, Bayron. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so, Royal Chris, how's the sound today? Have anybody got sound problems? No, you're a lot better now you're on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm you were peaking a bit at the beginning hey. of the show. <laughs> so, a quick yeah. press a couple of things on our chat if it stops moving. Matt's doing the Blackhawk. He's using the Hataka Orange Line Army helicopter drab is what colors would you use for modulation and mixing it up a little bit sand or flesh because you don't want to use white because you'll just desaturate it and it'll look vile so any sand colors go well with that color because it's a really really dark green isn't it if you want to lighten it yeah. uh and flesh is also just one of the best colors all around that i keep saying for just lightening paint so and then bob c saying thank you for phil's tip on Attacker aluminium or aluminium that he's put on his roof for the high C6, done his chipping with the hairspray techniques. So that's worked well. Nicey, nicey. Can we just get this one in from Robbie? It says, um, Is the Airfix 24th Hurricane any good? Uh, it's, not, it's not a bad kit, is it? I was say, asked it out of that age of that range and age of kits. I think the Hurricane was, was, the, was probably the best one that they did. Mm. Out of the, definitely out of Spitfire, the 109, the 190, the JU was all right, wasn't it? The, yeah, that, that, was, that wasn't too bad. And I think the Hurricane was probably the better one mm. out of the lot. Out of that lot, compared to the newer ones, it's, it's not a patch on the Typhoon or the um, Hellcat. Mm. Helka? Hold on. Helka. 
Yeah. Okay. So, Eels thing in here, we'll paraphrase it, but at what point does the kit become too complex? It's on about the SU-33. Surely that's sort of personal choice, that's, though, isn't it? That's up to the modeler, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I mean, if you think that's it's got far too many parts for you to be bothered with it, then... Mm. Yeah. I think that's the whole point, you know. I know. I think Neil's down in here talking about the um, the SU thirty three review I did with that one, and again, yeah. it is that thing where you know, from a person, and it purely is personal point of view. I just feel that like the SU uh, thirty three one I just did, the mini base one, is incredibly detailed, but that comes at a price of complexity to get that amount of detail into very small parts you've got to do them in lots of little bits and then you're going to have to put it together but and then it's up to the modeler if he wants to do that amount of time so you might think to yourself why would i want to build an undercarriage of 50 parts you know and it's got photo etching all the rest of it where another modeler would love to have a part 50 part count because you know it's going to be highly detailed and have every last strut nut and bolt on it so you know, but also it comes down to the quality and the cost of engineering from the said company, because obviously uh, to make it highly detailed, you know, some companies can do it through multi injection part molding and slip molding and all this fancy stuff and get away with having something that's incredibly well detailed, where another company hasn't got the budget to be able to do that. So they might have to mold it in 10 parts. So, you know, you've got that sort of offset with both sides of it. But like Matt said, I really do think it's personal choice up to the modeler if he wants to go to that level of detail. Or he might think, do you know what? It's got so much detail into it, I will get bogged down and bored or won't be able to do it with my sausage fingers. I'd rather do a simpler model with less part count. Yeah. But you can guarantee someone will take that kit and add loads of aftermarket to it. Yeah. Even as it is, someone someone will still add extra to that. Hmm. Yeah, you know, again, it, it is, I can understand, because I must admit, I've had lots and lots of feedback from various people, and I know people who have built the kit now, and they've said to me, I've built it, and it went together absolutely fantastic, and it was gorgeous. I've had another couple of people say to me, the trouble you've got is you've got to be so careful because that level of detail comes at a little bit of a price because if you don't get it all lined up properly it can be a little bit of a hassle um, and I've had other people say it's almost unbuildable because it's got so much detail into it. I take the unbuildable one really with a bit of pinch of salt, apologies if you're one of those people, but again you know it, it's that thing if we were talking a lot about the undercarriage with it because it's got lots of multi parts and going in and doing it all nicely and i think that's more akin of taking your time and and doing it rather than it's unbuildable i don't think there's even such a thing as an unbuildable kit these days because they're not that bad but you know i can understand what people are saying about it's a massive undertaking to do it and to do it justice that said, there was another gentleman who contacted me this week and said he's building the kit, he's absolutely in love with it, he's literally only just started and he's got big plans of detailing it even further, like Andy's saying, to go even further with it. And you're like, okay, you know, so he is planning on almost basically scratch building the top of the engine so he can have the rear decks open, uh, like some of the other SU-33s out there to show the engine through, because I was saying it doesn't come with the engine. He's planning on doing it. And like Andy said, you do get people who you know, go that extra mile with it as well. So it is literally personal choice which you go through. And I don't think there is any ever right or wrong with it. It's just personal choice. Yeah. So, um, I've got a quick one here. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've lost it. Where's he gone? There we go. Uh, from Alex, he's saying, I'm starting on the Italeri 48 scale B25G. I know it's the accurate miniatures kit uh, and it's quite nice. Is there any problems I should look out for uh, for parts uh, to replace with aftermarket. Anyone know the kit? It just needs seat belts, doesn't it? I thought yeah. it was. It's pretty nice, straight out of the box. Again, you could have the same conversation as what we've just had, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's all down to personal choice whether or not you want to do it or not. And hmm. it's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty stacked with detail in it. Probably yeah. even for an old kit. Yeah. Perhaps mm. gun barrels. Go mm. wrong with a set of master gun barrels can you but i don't think it needs much else than that so yeah cool are we uh going to wrap up then for today yes and we'll come back later for i think we will so don't forget we've still got the um things going on let me just bring them up 
So uh, it's not AK weather in pencils. It just happens to be where we left it. But obviously, we've got 10% off on the store. So just kit on any manufacturer down in here, and you'll get 10% off of the kits. It's not on anything else, just on kits from the actual PM store um, in there. And also, there's still the specials area. So these are separate from 10% off because these are already discounted. So there's not 10% on top of these, but we've got these down in here. So anything takes your fancy. Uh, they're limited, and when they're gone, they are gone with those ones. So we said before, we've got things like the Challenger down there, which we reckon is about 12% off. So these yeah. are a little bit more than the standard 10% that you'll find uh, down in there on there. Uh, on the uh, uh, PM store, obviously, it's only available to UK people at the moment. Sorry, 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 I know. Uh, but anyway, we've got sale prices down in there. So instead of like the full pack of sanders being like almost 45 quid, they're 34 quid. We've got a little bit, not much, because to be honest, it's sort all on those anyway uh, but anyway all the other sanders are at five pounds right the way through on those ones and also we got a little bit off the full pigment sets uh, as well so instead of them being 35 quid they are only 28 pounds if you want a full set of pigments there's nothing off of washes because to be honest we are very very low on them uh, we haven't got many at all so um, grab those whilst you can we got a bit of a clay shortage at the moment till next month so um, but yes lots of various things going on down in there as well cool do you, before we go, Phil, you go back to the uh, PM store a bit again and just show, go on to primers. Primers? Primers. Store. Got the new range of um, that Matt's been playing so with today. Over here. Oh, sorry, you're not even seeing it. Oh, there we go. Primers is down under here. So yeah. click into primers. The AK ones are the new range of AKs that Matt's been playing around with today. There yeah. we go. But doing a lot more playing around with in the future as well. Yes. So quick, have we got Mr. Surfer 1000? Mm. There's probably only one. Oh, no. right. So Grab it quick. <laughs> quick, I'm off to buy it. Hold on. We've got 1500 white. We've got quite a bit of 1500 white. So oh, right. Drop a there you go. bit of black paint in it. You can make grey, can't you? Well, yes, there is that. So, hey. yes. Always that's a 1500 white. Mm. <laughs> so, yes. So, cool. Right. Very good, indeedy. Right then, guys, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always. We'll be back with you for the sort of wind-down show and all the rest of it, and a bit of a giggle with the quiz at half past seven. So grab yourself a beer. I'm going to have a glass of wine or three. Oh, yeah. So I'll get half cut by the time we're done. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> it's the start of my holiday officially then. So that's it. I'm on holiday next week. Uh, right down on there. So don't forget, those deals and the various bits and pieces are going to run until probably just after the show in my account. I think it ends midnight, isn't it, for the PM store? Yeah, midnight. You're posh and have yours on auto uh, and yeah. things like that. So yes, be nice <laughs> to do those. Don't forget, give us a like, a thumbs up, a sign of love or something else like that. Always helps out with the old uh, Facebook and... Um, uh, youtube -y things so that would be great so yes if we're all done thank you very much for yep. nathan andy and matt and we will see you all again later then so now i've got to try and turn all this off somehow so uh, so until later everybody happy modeling take care and bye. 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 right hold on i've got to figure out how to turn all this off because it's on everywhere right that's that one <laughs> off and then this one